in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Praise the Lord. One last prayer. Father, give me an encounter tonight. Please cry from the depth of your heart. Give me an encounter. Show me something I have not seen before. Open my eyes to see something I have not seen before. Let my ears hear something I have not heard before. Grant me clarity. Grant me illumination. It's in you, Lord. It's in you. for your power for illumination for insight for wisdom we bless you and we acknowledge you even tonight do mighty things in our midst let there be impartations let there be transformation let there be all kinds of encounters at the instance of your word we thank you we bless you we honor you, for in Jesus' name I pray. Good evening, God bless you. Please be seated. It's good to have everyone around again. It's always, always a blessing for me. Every time I have the opportunity to bring the word of God, you will think because I've been doing this for long, I should be used to it. It is always fresh, always new. My passion remains on fire and I always long for the times when we share together in his presence. Just a few things and then we'll get to the word. Um, 
number one uh, please listen everyone inside and online um, I want to encourage us particularly over the issue of testimonies now truthfully speaking we have seen the hand of God in remarkable ways uh, my, my phone is full of hundreds of remarkable testimonies um, and I got to find out that the challenge for many people is the system that allows them to come and share there are so many people who would like to share their testimonies some seated here some online but it seems like there's been a bit of difficulty and I just want to simplify the process it's pretty straightforward we have our testimonies please listen our testimonies are handled officially by the media department they have their email address for those who are outside of this environment and not localized and you can always you are at liberty any time of the week to post your testimony and just grant permission that it be shared and there will always be a way of collating them together I think that there should be um, there should be okay the, the official number is there that's the media line please everyone you can have it down and let as many people there should be an email to please project an email that they will officially this is because we believe in testimonies we really do testimonies are more than just a manifestation of the anointing upon a man it is how people know that God is at work in a place. Testimonies are very important, vitally important. It's important that people know that not only that God is alive, but that he's at work bringing glory to the name of his son, Jesus. The Bible says, and it was noised abroad. The things that Jesus did, it's important. And I want to challenge everyone here as we continually experience the hand of God, the prophecies that come, the, the spiritual truths that are communicated alongside the manifestations that follow from our obedience, it's important we make it a culture. Now, please don't get into that psychological trap of feeling guilty for coming every week to share your testimony. Of course, provided everyone generally has a testimony but we would just like to appreciate testimonies that would consider notable and the reason is because we want to challenge the faith of the listeners are we together while it is not it is not um too small a reason to come up and say thank god that i'm alive i think that um it's, it's a testimony that would consider general not to demean it but then uh, we would want to hear testimonies of the mighty hand of God so that the faith of someone can be encouraged. Listen, you would see people sitting across like this and see everyone smiling uh, until you discuss with them the problems that they are sitting on and trusting God for a miracle. So, so they need to know that God is at work. So please make it a culture and um, be your brother's keeper on this wise. Do well to encourage your people some people are just shy they are really very timid could be for sociological reasons but let me tell you this is a home that is opened and loves everyone with no prejudice with no discrimination whatsoever if you cannot speak english speak hausa if you cannot speak hausa speak your language we'll find someone to interpret there should be no pressure whatsoever this is the house of god it's not a police station it's not a prison cell. It's not um, any paramilitary platform. This is where God's people should find expression within the jurisdiction of the word of God. So I just want to encourage everyone, please media, find a way of promoting this that I've said online so that the, our family both here and diaspora will know that we are interested in knowing what God is doing and, and frankly speaking, the list of the reasons is that which has to do with, you know, what God is doing through the man of God. The most important thing, Jesus said, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men. Testimonies are publicity strategies. It is important. Nobody wants to waste his time 
in a church a place where nothing works um, human beings are not that free people have serious things to do with their lives and their destinies and they need to be encouraged they need to be motivated that their time in God's presence will be a time that is worthwhile the Lord will bless us in the name of Jesus amen and amen um, the second is concerning our teachings now we remain grateful to God in this house for the remarkable literally without exaggeration the remarkable testimonies that come from the teachings God has anointed these teachings is more than the person who has communicated these truths the teachings work because the spiritual content in the messages are true they are not opinions it's dangerous to teach opinions our lives are too short too small and too limited to create doctrines out of our experiences and so we teach the Word of God the principles of the kingdom and those who believe and apply the truths that follow inevitably will return with testimonies and so do not leave the distribution of the teachings to just the media the PR and so on and so forth I think for me one of the greatest um, ways you can bless anyone that is cheap and affordable more than getting clothes and all of that is to just grant them access to these truths there's almost a teaching on every major subject matter find somewhere find someone who is hurting in an area find where there is ignorance find where there is oppression find where there's limitation and just help to be a bridge even with these teachings it's something that must be intentional are we together believers must be trained and mentored to know that these is not just a way of promoting a man's agenda is your contribution towards kingdom advance while you are struggling to know what you are called to do while you are still flogging it out with destiny <coughs> excuse me what what have you called me to do oh lord you can start from there are we together praise the lord um the third is that um, because of the overwhelming need our uh, public relations department uh, they have communicated the fact that um, people call all over and the lines we have are limited and so we have decided to at least add one more official line for the PR please if you can get it to the media let's project it if we have it so that the people can have it down so add it please um, the official lines of this ministry for correspondence and all of that is handled by our public relations department so please do well to have it down so that you can help those who um, would want to reach the ministry many times it may be difficult for me to respond to everybody the way we want um, but then our lines are open almost all day almost all week um, so you can take advantage of that praise the Lord the last function and then we'll get to the Word of God Mark chapter 16 we we'll read 17 and 18 part of the apostolic and the prophetic is to be able to understand times and seasons and to guide the body of Christ um, again i've seen in the realm of the spirit the onslaught of the manifestation of the spirit of death i've seen the spirit of death and the spirit of infirmity and and this this is a plot you know death there are times that death can come over people but there are times that death can come over territories it's not necessarily looking for a particular person anybody that comes under the influence of that spirit will go for it are we together um, so there are three things that we want to address and then we'll get to the word number one is death number two very strange afflictions and infirmities someone will just complain my head my stomach my leg and the person is gone this is how you know that a thing is demonic and then number three 
although it may not have come to our region but the bible says to pray for the peace jerusalem this act of kidnapping people they just steal a human being now it's not only properties that are taken you know and this is not just an issue of terrorists again it's becoming a lucrative industry and so any even friends steal themselves are we together yes they connive with touts and pick up people and um demand for all kinds of all kinds of uh, uh, uh what do we call it ransom you know very ungodly amounts that they call and then eventually they subject the people some people are raped some people are, are harmed the psychology and all of that uh, it's important for us to fortify our spiritual borders and then as part of the larger family body speak i told you that bodies only execute what the realm of the spirit concludes upon are we together if your hand steals something told your hand to steal the hand does not have a will on its own the body without a spirit is dead so everybody who is being inspired to do this there is an ideology that is spiritual in origin are we together uh, and some of these things come as a result of the laziness of people this is why we continue to challenge people to be productive no productive person will sit down and begin to look at the options kidnapping someone is proof of how you have disbelieved your own destiny that means you have concluded that on your own wisdom cannot work for you favor cannot work for you relationships cannot work for you and you settle uh, for kidnapping people mark 16 17 and 18 the bible says there are signs that should follow believers and it says in my name they shall cast out devils number two they shall speak with new tongues let's read verse 18 it says they shall take up serpents and if that means they don't intentionally go and drink but if for any reason they drink any deadly thing it shall not hurt them then they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover but the tragedy is in psalm 74 and verse 9 please give us psalm 74 and verse 9 read with me please we see not our signs there are signs that the bible says should be seen and the complaint now is that we see not our signs there is no more any prophets the correct rendition is is there no more prophet it's a question and then it says is there not any among us that know it how long that means we do not see the things that the bible says should be seen and where are the advocates is there no prophet is there no representative to tell us how long to define the limits are we together part of the ministry of the apostolic and the prophetic is not in titles habakkuk said i will stand upon my watch and i will set myself upon the tower that i will see what the lord should say that means it is within the power of the holy spirit given to men to command darkness and say thus far have you come and no further shall you go are we together please rise up on your feet do not be like esther when her man was plotting the death of the jews word went to esther and she was careless and mordecai said do not think that because we are outside of the gates when they are done with us paraphrasing they will come back to you in one minute i'd like you to stand as a priest that you are and decree and declare these tripartite spirits we banish first from our spiritual atmosphere and then out of kaduna state and this nation number one the spirit of death please pray number one the spirit of death oh death where is thy sting oh grave where is thy victory
and to deliver them who through the fear of death have all their lifetime been subject to bondage cause the spirit of death number two take authority over strange infirmities infirmities with no medical history demonic oppressions over people number three take authority over the wicked spirit of kidnapping and all kinds of activities of terrorists in the name of jesus we command we decree and we declare we stand as watchmen and we declare our territory is sanitized from these operations from these afflictions in the name of jesus pray for your family pray for your loved ones hallelujah i decree and declare in the name of jesus we banish the operation of death first from this family second from this city third from this state and fourth from this nation you are a spirit you are not an occurrence we call you by your name and we banish your operation in the name of Jesus Christ number two strange afflictions in the name Parusia. In the name that is above all names, any planting in your body that is not of the Christ, I curse it now by the God of heaven. Number three, we pray. This one is not us. We speak to the elements of the earth. We speak to the elements of the supernatural. We command the earth and every element of the supernatural that any man... See, listen, let me teach you something. You see, the earth is a universal point of contact. Everyone touches the earth. The terrorist who wants to kill another person now is on earth. His feet is touching the earth. And you can use the earth and speak. In the name of Jesus, we speak by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let the activity of kidnappers and terrorists within this region and around stop now. Stop now. The Bible says that he frustrates the tokens of liars. He makes diviners mad so that their hands cannot perform their enterprise. And if there is anyone, whether your loved ones or whoever, that is under the siege of kidnappers, we declare their unconditional release in the name of Jesus Christ. These are some of the ways, it's more than terrorism. It's also how the spirit of poverty works. When you carry five or ten million and give to rescue someone, what if that's your life savings? Very demonic operations. Zaria, we speak to you. This is our domain. In the name of Jesus, we draw a line across these spiritual borders and we declare it sanctified in the name of Jesus. We decree and declare that any activity that is not the Christ, sponsored by the Spirit, we banish its continuity. In the name of Jesus, please be seated. God bless you. You see, please understand this. 
the believer is not a cause to creation the believer is not is not is not a nuisance to civilization the believer is not a luggage that our sociology is trying to manage no the ideology that we have been given is an ideology that transforms it does not destroy are we together so it's important that that we continue to emphasize believers please more than knowing who we are we must obtain grace from god to be the light and to be salt not to sit down and hope things change not to sit down and be careless and say it does not concern me you see god has worked with us way past the issue of denominations and personal doctrinal affiliations and all of that we are we are we are members of his body what happens to one happens to all it's an ideology that we must carry it's an ideology we must sustain hallelujah praise the lord thank you thank you for allowing me to do that very quickly we'll get to the business of the night the keys of the kingdom we're on a revision series for some of you who are just coming so many people we honor and we welcome and we truly bless you tonight let's get to the word of god the keys of the kingdom this is part two we're on a revision series um the way that god trains us in this place is very intentional it's very meticulous very defined the the exegesis of scripture here is not just meant to be part of the things that happen in a service but by the grace of god there is a portrait there is there is a picture of what god seeks that we become praise the lord and as we strive by the guidance of his spirit and through the spirit of wisdom we continue to bring teachings that are spiritual in context that are balanced life applicable and are transforming again and um every once in a while before we get into another level god would grant us grace to do um somewhat of a revision that means to go back and look at the things that we have learned by the spirit correct the gray areas because you see nobody leaves what works nobody leaves what works and if our christian lives um if it continues to be unfruitful we will be frustrated the bible says herein is our father glorified john 15 and verse 8 that ye bear much fruit not just fruit much fruit it says so shall ye be my disciples this will be proof that i mentored you your results will show that i mentored you are we together matthew chapter 16 and verse 19 we started off last week jesus was speaking about the keys of the kingdom and i started just a quick recap how that there is only one key to the kingdom one key to the kingdom and that key is not an object is the person christ christ being the door the authorized entrance point we observed last week that um there are not only doors there are also windows there are other illegitimate routes into a house but the authorized channel to any house is called the door if a visitor jumps through your window he's not welcome although he's in your house are we together so jesus said i am the door jesus never said i am the window i am the door there is only one key to the kingdom the christ the door but when you get into the life of the kingdom through the experience that we call new birth then the kingdom functions by keys a key is a symbol for access access so the keys of the kingdom are the truths that grants the believers access to function effectively to be in experience a true representation of the image the character of the christ and to manifest the possibilities that are in this kingdom and um the keys of the kingdom 
are the access points that activate and deactivate possibilities the faith life is a compendium of infinite possibilities that means there is no end to how far there is no end to the potentials that are contained in this faith life my life and your life no matter how yielded cannot exhaust all the possibilities that are contained in the christ and so our life should become an like like an explorer's life we continue to explore different dimensions of the possibilities contained in the christ i said something last week that i would like to say before we take off from there the word of god is very important in helping believers know god and in helping believers become effective and the word of god is important because it defines the boundaries of god's commitment to man please you have to understand this god is not indefinitely committed to man there's no record in scripture that allows for god to be committed to you anyhow he's committed by predefined conditions and that condition is encapsulated in the word it's important to know this now his compassion can respond to any issue of your life but it takes the word of god to define how far his hand can come towards you it's very very important compassion is the ability to be touched with the feelings of a man's infirmity but he has exalted his word the bible says above his name i say this because many times believers think that god is committed to them and we continue to quote a lot of wise sayings trado african approaches and we believe that it will it will draw sympathy and because god is love he will respond but then you will never see results until you bring yourself in alignment to the word of god and that from a child thou hast known the holy scripture that is able to make you wise unto salvation this is very very important the word of god defines the boundaries of god's commitment the word of god shows how far he can help you any provision that the word of god does not allow cannot be accessed by the saints so it is important that believers don't learn and know the word of god just as an option if you want to be spiritual then take the word seriously if you don't want to be spiritual you can roam around the things of god no there is no victory outside of the word the word of God is the testament, is God's commitment, is his vow. The word of God is a definition of how far the terms and conditions. It's important that we know the word. There's no place in scripture where the Bible records that Satan comes to steal prayer. No, he can stop prayer, but he cannot steal prayer. But if that seed is sown, the parable of the sower, the seed is the word of God and Satan cometh immediately not a demon he comes himself and he steals the word are we together very very important so we have to pay attention to the word right we began to show the sequence of spiritual growth last week how that it matters for us to understand the sequence of spiritual growth when a believer encounters new birth what next what is the next assignment listen there are many frustrated believers today because of the religion of following Christ. Now, take note of my choice of words, the religion. That means that there is no life and no power. There is no intent and no goal. Why do I have to serve God? Are we together? So when believers get born again, there's no motivation for spiritual growth. There is no motivation for increase at best their motivation may be a desire to be like their pastor meaning to go into ministry and this is not a very proper way of mentoring believers because the vicissitudes of life itself is they are distracting there are too many things in life to distract a believer you must be able to have a road map that guides if i get born again where do i go from here and why the average believer after responding come please after responding to an altar call honestly does not know what he should do again 
and he would have to subscribe to the ideology that is predominant within the territory where he got saved now it looks very simple but sometimes it can be very poisonous because it matters who talks to you about god and it matters what you are told it matters the jurisdiction of the spiritual information that is supplied you you can hate god because he was wrongly proposed you can have imbalance in your spiritual life because some well-meaning but maybe ignorant person communicated a dimension of christ in a lopsided way and i told us again and i've shared it here in this house that how we grow matters not just that we grow now think with me for instance that this gentleman just got born again and the next topic he hears is love and marriage or financial prosperity as powerful as it is this guy is already in trouble you see there, there is a foundation of truth that he should be taught to make the issue of marriage or the issue of finance make sense you see that now if this guy has not been taught things like how to deal with the flesh conformity to the image of the christ you know how to rise beyond the vicissitudes of this life that life of surrender the prosperity is going to destroy this man he will have the money because the principles work but it will be at the expense of his soul but the bible says to prosper even as your soul prospers that means while you are prospering in other areas there has to be a check if you find out your soul is not prospering then you need to vet the system you are following if it's god's system you will prosper even as your soul prospers hallelujah when a believer gets born again this is the sequence or gets saved the next assignment of this believer is to be introduced to the ministry of the holy spirit remember jesus from john 15 john 16 in fact john 14 he began to talk about the ministry of the holy spirit that he was on his way going but the comforter the comforter whom the father will send in my name the gospel of john he began to introduce us to the holy spirit when he gets to chapter 16 he says i have many things to tell you but ye cannot bear them now how be it when he the spirit of truth is come he said he will guide you into all truth so you see his assignment he will guide you into all truth that means you have to be guided truth is not on the ground and you just pick anywhere you have to be guided and that is in the office of the holy spirit as a distinct personality of the godhead to guide believers into all truth studying scripture without his guidance will lead to error imbalance and religion when he the spirit of truth is come he said he will guide you into all truth he will show you the things that will come he will take up what is mine and give it to you are we together so this man is introduced to the ministry of the holy spirit and that encounter with the Holy Spirit first begins to open his organs of interaction with the realm of the Spirit. Because the Bible says that which is flesh is flesh and that which is spirit is spirit. Number two, the Bible says that the natural man cannot understand the things of the Spirit. He cannot receive because they are spiritually discerned. Are we together? no matter how illiterate no matter how educated no matter how enlightened the moment you want to start that spirit work you have to subscribe to the ministry of the holy spirit it is very very important if you do not subscribe to the ministry of the holy spirit you will you will walk with god purely based on intellect or based on the sociological context of life and all of these things are within the three-dimensional realm you will not be able to walk with the holy spirit and walk with god outside of this realm if you are together please say amen, amen. you can mechanically pick the bible and just begin to read like any atheist would just read to know about the christian faith but this book that you see has to be opened by the spirit Isaiah 29 and verse 11. It's a popular scripture here. Please give it to us. Isaiah 29 and verse 11. Read with me. It's projected. Please. One, two, read. And the vision of all is become unto you as the words of a 
book that is sealed which men deliver to one that is learned saying read this i pray thee and he said i cannot for it is what notice it didn't say it is closed it is sealed so you can open it and yet it is sealed next verse 12 and the book is delivered unto him that is not learned saying read this i pray thee and he said i am not learned you see there is a realm where both the learned and the unlearned come together and depend on the holy spirit this is very important because the ways of god are not the ways of man the methodologies of the kingdom sometimes are very ego stinging and insulting and until you become spiritual by your submitting to the holy spirit you will not be effective in your spirit work that was why Naaman refused to wash. He was angry. He was embarrassed. What kind of nonsense is this? You brought me to embarrass me before a prophet. The prophet did not even come out to even honor me. Is it that he's not aware that I am Naaman, the captain of the Syrian army? And the little lady encouraged him and said, Look, um, if he had told you to do another thing that is worse, wouldn't you do it? And the man humbled himself, washed seven times in a very dirty river, and then came out clean the ways of god alas master for it was missing they where they met with prophet elisha was very very straight narrow and they went to a greater place and while they were felling the trees the axe head fell you would expect that he would say who can swim so that we'll get it quickly but th that was already a hopeless situation scientifically he said where fell it and he took a stick threw it there and all of a sudden it came back the prophets began to eat and they shouted there's death in the pot and he took flour and sprinkled on it and said go ahead and eat it's been cleansed so the, the ways of god are a mystery you have to understand a serpent comes and is buffeting the people and then a brazen serpent is lifted and they are told to just look at it that whoever would not look at that serpent will be a victim of this one very very powerful the ways of god in god's economy there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth there is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty are you seeing that now yes so it takes being spiritual to really really become a kingdom person now i began to share with us a few keys of the kingdom we'll continue from there bless god Number one, we looked at two last week. Number one was the concept of starting and prioritizing God. God only, God first, God above all. And we explored the first three words of Genesis or first four words of Genesis 1 verse 1. I'm just doing a quick recap. The Bible says in Genesis 1 verse 1, the first four words, in the beginning, God. The beginning of everything must be god you do not ask god to come and patch your life you don't create your agenda create your plans and ask god to endorse it uh -uh. he's alpha omega not chronos omega god will not join you on the way he has to start are we together the bible does not call him chronos you don't call him to join the bandwagon of your will and your intentions he's alpha and omega and so we challenged ourselves that it's important that in this kingdom those who excel in this kingdom are those who must exalt god and his purposes above their desires above their intentions i want it this way but i acknowledge the fact that when god becomes above everything he protects he preserves two we spoke about the concept of success, tying it with the law of the mind, is very important. That transformation is important in this kingdom. In this kingdom, we reign by light, we reign by knowledge, and that knowledge comes through transformation. Transformation through renewal and enlightenment. Take note, transformation happens through renewal and enlightenment renewal because there are old ideas that are there that may not be consistent with the ways of christ not everything in your mind is dangerous not everything in your mind is wrong 
but when you come to Christ the Holy Spirit Adam before his fall did not need renewal there was no need for renewal are we together the content in his mind and his understanding came directly from God Satan began to sow a seed of an information when Jesus came the Bible says um, God now came walking in the cool of the day Adam where art thou he said I heard thy voice but I hid because I was naked and he said who told you that means you have captured in your mind an information that did not come from me who told you who told you you have banked an information that is a seed that will grow are we together yes I hope you know that it is not only God that is the sower of the word it is not only Satan to sows. remember in the parable of the wheat and the tears while men slept an enemy whoever that enemy is we know he's a farmer too because he sows so you can wake up with ideas you did not sleep with you can wake up with a harvest you did not remember sowing this is why transformation is powerful you look at a little child a little baby that looks very helpless in the hands of the mother and give the child one or two years the child will begin to pronounce words and you are wondering where it's coming from the baby will wind his or her hand and give the mother a slap and while the mother is crying the baby is laughing where did that come from certainly not from the womb but where for God's sake did that come from when has the child associated cry with joy are we together now so you see the kind of world that we live in he said in iniquity did my mother conceive me and then the way life works ensures that you remain um, a sinner in many ways the anger from the boss man I mean what he would do someone depriving you of your rights and you know all of there are too many things within 24 hours that can destroy your understanding and then the Bible says in Romans chapter 12 1 and 2 I beseech thee brethren it's not a sermon it's a plea by the mercies of God that ye offer your bodies a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto God he calls it your reasonable act of service verse 2 says and do not be conformed here it is do not be conformed to this world is the Greek word aeon the thinking pattern the system of operation that comes with this cosmos it says but be ye transformed how by the renewing of your mind and that by that you will be able to prove what is that good and perfect and acceptable will of God Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5 says to permit this mind to be in you which was also in Christ Jesus there was a mindset there was a thinking there was a body of conviction that made Jesus that flawless when he was on earth and he's saying allow the word let there means allow allow this body of beliefs allow these belief systems to also be enshrined in your understanding very important Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18 the Bible says having their understanding darkened then it says being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their mind when your understanding is darkened you are alienated from the potential the experience of the life of God it says through the ignorance that is in them transformation is very important there is almost no hope for an effective Christian life for any believer who ignores transformation and it's important because Africa is a very superstitious continent and in Nigeria where people who are very spiritual we would we would opt for wise sayings we would opt for a mix of trado African Christian approaches and would not settle down for the Word of God that is balanced truthful intelligent and transforming and this lopsidedness continues to produce the different qualities and the versions of Christians that we have and all those species will all be credited to the wisdom of God and it's not entirely so because there is a species of man that God cannot produce so when you see that kind of man you know that there was a corruption somewhere hallelujah praise the Lord the mind is very powerful I taught us about success 
that true success in the kingdom is not something that we do true success is what you attract by who you become this is very powerful there are so many people who continue to labor effortlessly to do things financially spiritually they want to do things and there is a place of doing there is a place of action but action is only relevant when there is transformation success is what you attract by who you become there is a level of transformation you get to that cannot allow a certain level of life to remain it's impossible Are we together you cannot see papa Ia deboe for instance at a restaurant trying to buy rice and fish his transformation does not allow him to have that kind of physical experience somebody will be called you will think it's because he's an elderly father of faith and you want to honor him but someone will stand up and say sir please go back home give me the honor of cooking to bring for you because his level of transformation rejects that physical result are you seeing how life works you don't say i hate poverty you are transformed to an extent that it becomes unfair to remain at that level so this is a mistake that believers continue to make we try to do things and the things we do are higher than who we are so the results continue to boomerang and bring us back to our levels our mindsets success is a product of growth it's more than doing things God can tell you you're going to have 5,000 members, but you have to grow. It's more than just prophecy. There are ethics that you honor at every level of growth. And as you continue to transit, your results continue to change, to reflect the change in you. As you change, your clothes will change. As you change, your honor will change. As you change, your communication, your understanding, as it's changing, your relationships will change. Everything continues to change to reflect the changing person. You don't go and look for friends. You attract them by your growth. Are we together? You don't go around hand picking people. This is, the, this is the labor that God saved us from through transformation. Look how painful it is to go and select friends. How do you know the person will not change tomorrow? Allow the wisdom of God to select them. Your assignment is to grow. Does not deep call on to deep. When you grow, it begins to change. You cannot be wealthy and have poor friends. It's not about driving them. The law edits itself. It edits your possibilities. The moment there is that transition, your one room starts pushing you out without an intention to leave. You don't have to say, I'm, I'm tired of this place. No, that's not wise. Grow. There is a level to which you grow. Your one room will push you out. And the laws of God will back your exit. They remained in Egypt until Moses started bringing an information. Moses said, thus said the God of the Hebrews. Your 430 years is exhausted. He didn't preach in one day. They kept hearing it. While they started believing an exodus, there was, there was the, no matter how bound they were, they were forced out of the place. Listen, it is frustrating. This is why a fake life, and oh dear, God bless and help our generation. Gathering physical things that are not reflected in your growth is a waste of time. It was authorized to live and it must live. There is no power in existence that can keep it with you. If I bless you with one million, your mind and your mind has not grown to that level. Your mind will interpret that one million as an attack and will fight its exit until it returns to the value that reflects your growth. It's not the issue of a spirit of, of, of uh, poverty. No. Satan is an opportunist. When he comes, he looks at a man's mental construction and uses it to build the strategy. Satan does not come to a man with a default strategy. His strategy is bespoke. It's made to your mindset. He will study your mindset from it, study your vulnerability, and carve out a strategy from it to bring you down. Satan cometh to me, but did not find anything. Satan comes to men and check where is darkness? What gives me license? What gives me access? 
if your prayer life is on fire he can't attack your prayer life he will check your understanding of the word of god they are called rulers of darkness their domain is when there is ignorance are we together mm. the law of the mind when i learned this law it changed my life i knew that there had to be an easy way it's difficult to give god glory the way many people seek success your assignment is to grow when you grow from the intelligence of that growth you will be guided on what to do circumspectly the bible says to walk circumspectly as wise and not as unwise and it says the way you walk circumspectly is by applying time redemption strategies to your life redeem time you don't redeem time by refusing to walk in time time is automatic but that your life becomes circumspect when you take pathways that have time redemption advantages on them like following the path of favor like following the path of mercy like following the path of growth rather than seeking things when you seek things and get them in five years and then by the sixth year it leaves you that's time wastage but when you grow in two years and attract what stays for life that's time redemption so the bible says to walk circumspectly as wise and not as unwise say i'm growing the third spiritual law we are doing a revision thank you jesus halus kapratuskia the law of faith let's run to the laws and see how many we can touch the law of faith numbers chapter 23 and verse 19 please numbers 23 and verse 19 read with me it's projected one to read god is not a man that he should lie neither the son of man that he should repent hath he said and shall he not do it or hath he spoken and shall he not make it good the law of faith is a very powerful law the bible declares again and again in this kingdom i'm doing a revision that the just the believer one who has been justified in christ that you will live by faith the only assurance of your victory the only assurance of tomorrow the assurance of success is faith there is no earthly guarantee given to any man not by any uncle not by any auntie not by any certificate not by any platform the authorized platform of confidence for the believer is faith and this is the victory that overcome even by faith are we together what is faith faith is your conviction your conviction your conviction the name given to your conviction about God and the integrity of his person and the corresponding action that is taken to honor that conviction is called faith. Faith is not some laborious doctrine to explore in and out. It's as simple as that. But I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded that he is able. He has an ability and I know him. I'm persuaded. Are we together? Very important. Come, Sheun. Look at this, please. Now, if I look at Sheun now and I say, Sheun, I'm going to give you 1,000 naira. The first thing he's going to do is to draw from his understanding of who he thinks I am. My ability, my integrity, everything comes under pressure. At the instance of that word, he would have to verify whether, number one, I have the integrity and the willingness to give him a thousand naira. And then number two, whether I have the ability. I may have the willingness, the integrity, but not have the ability. So God allowed his word so we can vet him. He's not afraid of being vetted. God is saying, probe me, probe my integrity. I've worked with people under any condition through different dispensations. So that your conclusion on reading this is that god is not a man that he should lie are we together now it's not something you just believe he tells you go through it i allow you to have this the chronicles of my integrity so that you will believe me when i say i can lift a man from a dunghill and sit him with princes vet it did i not raise joseph did i not raise esther ah it's powerful to believe god there are people in ministry waiting for uncle or auntie to hold some ceremony 
and to assure them of some support system um there will be one building that you'll be using and will be giving you thirty thousand. you will never rise you will never move listen if it is god he will prove himself faith powerful find a believer that has faith and understands faith now faith is not just blindly believing faith is conviction are we together and that conviction comes through understanding you have really understood god and his ways when you know where how you contribute in terms of your partnership your participation listen bible faith does not leave everything to god there is always man's role in that equation please understand this bible faith will never allow god to just do everything there is always the participation and your participation is your believing god and then subscribing to the terms the conditions that guarantee for that outcome this is where many believers continue to miss it faith is more than just confession faith is more than just receiving as important as they are they are all equations in that i mean variables in that equation of faith but bible faith is not bible faith until you find the condition allocated Deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 1 and 2 and it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to do and observe all that I command you this day that the Lord thy God now watch this that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth verse 2 it says and all these blessings shall come upon thee and overtake you condition if thou shalt hearken to the voice of the Lord if thou shalt pay attention if you place value on the speakings of God, if you place value on his ways, his intelligence, his methodology, you will not be exalted above all nations just because you want to get there. Bible faith is not just confessing and now from this scripture, you say in the name of Jesus, I'm exalted above all nations. You are correct. But if you stop there, you will live a frustrated Christian life. There is a condition. While you speak, you release that word. But more than that, you have to go back and find out. So, what is the voice of God saying? What does it say? The voice of God, the logos of God, his thoughts, his intents. What does he say? Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart from out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do, do, do. Do, not just say, do all that is therein. It says, then shall thou make thy way prosperous and thou shall have good success. Good success. That means if I'm manifesting faith, then I must begin to understand the ways of God. The ways of God. Every time you are learning the laws of God, every time you are understanding the methodologies of the kingdom, you are in extension manifesting the law of faith. It's proof that you believe God. It's proof that you expect him to work. Are we together? Yes. The law of faith. You must believe in God. This life will come with so many things that will threaten you. When David stood before Goliath, he said, You come to me with your bows and your spears, but I come to you in the name of the Lord God of heaven, um, uh, the, 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 one, the, the one whom you have defied. He was speaking to Goliath. You have to stand and look at life and say, You may look like a mountain, but faith deflates mountains. It is true. It is true. Time will fail me, he says, to talk of Gideon, Jephthah, Barak, men who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, shut the mouth of lions. Listen, let me tell you the truth. There is nothing in your life and around your life that is new under the sun. It takes faith to subdue. Say in the name of Jesus, Amen. by the faith of God at work in me, 
I subdue every mountain. Don't approach challenges as if it was uniquely. No, no, no. There is nothing special about challenges. It is defeat that should be a surprise. Don't be embarrassed by the mountains that stand before you. Find out the provisions that make for your victory and engage it as though your life depends on it. And let the God of heaven, who is not a man that should lie, come and prove himself in your life. Every testimony here is faith. The equation of faith completed. Trust in God. Please don't doubt God. I know that we live in a sociological context that places very little reverence on God. We make it look like if you cannot see how one plus one is equal to two, one plus one plus God is any answer he says it should be. Any answer. By what standard will you say he failed? If a house is my own, I can choose that the back door becomes the main entrance. It's my house. So you don't say because I entered here, yes, this is my house. You are a visitor. Anywhere I show you that the door is, you follow there. Kai, this God. Hmm. God can decide to say, 2018 plus 2019 should be equal to 2001 to 2017's result together. This is God for you. Ten years in one. Hallelujah. The law of faith. Let's run. Faith is very important. We have dealt with the law of faith here. We have discussed the law of value as one of the kingdom mysteries for an effective Christian life. The law of value. Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 16, the Bible declares that the gift of a man will make room for him and bring him before great men. This is a very powerful scripture because it does not lie. Sincerely, let me tell you, this is one of the, I, I, I can't use the word, truest scriptures. But this scripture you see, please have a lot of regard for it. The gift of a man truly can make room for him. It didn't say we'll show him where his room is. Until then, there is no space for you. The gift will make room for you. Like a visitor comes to your house and there was no space. And because of your honor for that visitor, the children will come out to sleep in the parlor and you quickly make room. So where there was no space for you, that your gift can come and say, what is going on here? The table of greatness, where is my space? Sorry, there's no space. No, it will shift until it creates a chair for you and a throne. The gift of a man. The gift of a man can make room can take a man out of a life of mediocrity and pain and shame and bring you to a place of greatness. It's very important. Classic um, story is the story of Joseph. Genesis chapter 41, when you read 14 and then from 33 to 46. I don't want to go into it. Forgive me, I'm rushing because we're just, this is a revision series. I'm reminding you that these are the keys of the kingdom. These are the truths we engage. If you don't engage this, you will fail. I tell you sincerely. They are not opinions. They are not doctrinal perspectives. When Jesus came, he began to mentor the disciples in what we call the Beatitudes. Teaching them the ways of the kingdom. It's, it's important that we understand the methodologies of God. It's not, the discourse, it's not an invention of one man. Please understand this. Jeremiah 6, I believe, verse 16. Let's go there and then we'll return here. Jeremiah 6, 16. The Bible says to ask for the ancient part. It says, stand in the ways and see and ask for the old part. Wherein is the good way? It says, when you find it, walk therein and ye shall find what? Rest. Another word for rest is Sabbath. The Sabbath of a man comes. The Bible says labor to enter your rest. That labor is not a labor in the flesh. 
it's a labor of understanding 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 that there is a belief system there is a construction when you hold the keys of the kingdom they can bring you in experience to your sabbath so two people all saved by god can walk on earth commanding different dimensions of results and the difference is not the love of god for them for the same lord is rich unto all the difference is their understanding psalm 82 and verse 5 they know not neither will they understand they walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course verse 6 says have i not said ye are gods and all of you not some of you are children of the most high verse 7 says but ye shall die like mere men and fall like one of these princes so your destiny is not just left to God. How can I lie, Sharia? Whatever will be, will be. Those wise sayings are poisonous. Are we together? The law of value. Very, very powerful. You will continue to sweep the floor of life and destiny until your value bails you out. To sit with kings. Your value decide who, decides who pursues you. It is true. And who pursues you decides the magnitude of your reward. God designed life to operate based on a reward system. There's no sentiments to it. Life operates based on a reward system. That means that no matter how bad my background is, no matter how bad it was, there is a bailout system. I can be valuable. I can find my way out of every nonsense in life. It has nothing to do with who likes you or who does not like you. It's a principle backed up by God's own integrity. When you discover and you develop problem-solving abilities, when you become fruitful, when you become productive, it's impossible to be ignored regardless of tribal affiliation regardless of sentiments regardless of age and gender the world does not have too many people who are valuable please understand this potentially we all are but in experience there are few people per territory you can you can do a random sampling there are few people per territory who are really valuable so it's impossible to be ignored it's like holding bright light in a very dark night. How could you be ignored? I show you what will take away mediocrity from your life. It's impossible to be ignored. You may ignore my background, that's all right. You may not like my persona, that's all right. But the value I carry, then anointed by God, developed and served with excellence, it's impossible to ignore it. And we will never settle for less when we know there's more that's found in you. And I will never settle for less. I know there's more that's found in you. There is more there is more than a weak and a mediocre life there is more than a life of just getting married having children and managing the problems of life until death takes away your life there is more than that there is a life of meaning and glory and beauty he has called us into glory and virtue he has called many sons into glory where your life becomes an influence for his majesty your life becomes an inspiration to a generation more than just food to eat more than a little house here and there i have one house two cars one estate one business a wife my children and that's it that's a mediocre life there's more than that are we together the bible says that you are the light of the world jesus is teaching here now you are the light of the world, the salt of the earth. He says, if the salt has lost its savour, its saltiness, wherewith shall it be salted? It is for no good but to be trampled underfoot by men. He says, you are the light of the world. 
Then he says, a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden. That's the word. You cannot ignore a believer who has refined his ability. And my brothers and my sisters, when the glory of God comes upon who you are and the works of your hands, your life becomes an epistle of unending wonder. One wonder connecting to another. When people think they have exhausted a dimension, here you come like the eagle. Another page. God does not select a few people to be great and a few people to follow and scrounge in mediocrity. No. It's a very poisonous proposition. He desires that all men, the Bible says, Revelation chapter 5 and verse 10, that we have all been made together unto our God, kings, or a kingdom of priests, kings and priests. And he said, we, not one person, we shall reign on earth. Please believe the word of God. It's not a scam. Believe the word of God. It may take time. And while that is happening, different people can argue about what they think or know about your life. But just allow the word of God take you like a lift. It will take you to a mountain that you will stand and wonder. And all you will see from your life is an effulgence of praise. It's called doxazo, the flaunting of a king's glory. Now, thanks be to God, he says, that causes us always to triumph. Are we together? Yes. And Isaac looked at his son and blessed his son and he said that his smell was like the field that the Lord has blessed. A man's life can become a fragrance that is perceived by a generation. Value. Value. Don't say my family came from this. Nathaniel said about Jesus, can anything good come out of Nazareth? And Jesus did not turn and say, ah, Nathaniel, so much. No, no, no. He was right. There was a history to it. Hmm. But he said, Nathaniel, just because I did this now, you, have, ah, you will see greater things than this. That Nazarene that you laugh at, you will see something out of him. That rejected stone. Listen, there is an advantage being in Christ. There is an advantage that your tribe, there is, there is a limit to the advantage that being a Yoruba person gives you. Being an Igbo person gives you. Being a northerner gives you. Being a middle belt, a, south, a southerner. There is an advantage that being an American citizen, a British citizen, they all have their advantages, but they are still limited. Ah, but now are we the sons of God and it does not yet appear. Do not underestimate the power and the potentials locked up in one who has been a benefactor of the grace of God. Now are we the sons of God and it does not yet appear. Otherwise, people like us would not have a stake in life. But hallelujah. Ah. You may laugh at my background, but watch my future. You may laugh at yesterday, but not tomorrow. Between yesterday and tomorrow is the cross and the throne. I will not remain at the cross. Jesus died for only three days. He didn't die forever. Man should not remain at the cross forever. If you remain at the cross forever, it's a sign that death has swallowed you up. Are we together? Please shake off that mediocrity from your life. Don't, don't move around like a second class citizen and allow people with their pride in their limitation to bully you out of destiny. You don't have to be arrogant. You don't have to insult anybody. But please have a healthy confidence. You may laugh at me but not the one with me. The Bible never said, as far as I'm concerned, I'm successful. He said, with God. Laugh at me if you don't, if I'm alone. Laugh at me because your prophecy will be right. But with God. Renard Bonke, I remember those, those times when he was preaching in just in his crusade. He said, even if you call him a big zero, the bigger the zero, God is the one that is added to the zero. So if I'm five zeros plus one, if I become six zeros plus one, if I become seven zeros, so the bigger the zero, the greater the value when he comes. Let me give you the New Living Translation of that. There is this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of power may be of God.
when God wanted to humble the fallen angels, he used clay to make man. You see, the fallen angels were not made from dust. Their material was light. And now God decided to make mud and put his image that they so died for to get in that earthen vessel. And they said, this is not fair. Even Lucifer that was the light bearer and effulgence of the light of God did not have the privilege to carry the image of the Christ. The Holy Spirit never came inside any one angel. Never came inside one cherubim. But he made clay and breathed upon that man the breath of life. Please don't just be motivated alone. Be angry. You know, we have these funny ways of looking at people in society. You are not beautiful. You are ugly. You don't speak English well. Don't worry. My result will correct any error in my English. Abba! Don't allow life defeat you like this cheaply. You know, and this is a world of arrogance. Even one minute to a man falling inside a pit, he will act as if he still has control. Let me tell you, the days that will come will reveal a dimension of the glory of the church. It will be impossible. The church will not just be some kind of fanatical people who are, who are close within a religious sect. No, the social economy will see the intelligence of God. Was it not prophesied by prophet Micah that in the last days, the mountain of the Lord's house will be exalted above every other mountain and the nations will flow to it they will come and say come let us go to the house of god to the god of jacob for he will teach us his ways he says for from zion out of zion shall proceed the law not into zion out of zion say i'm valuable it's a revelation. Don't give yourself cheap to life. Just because culture, just because your past, just because your failures have concluded about you, shake that off and know that there is a way. Oh, rejoice not over me, my enemies. Mm -mm. While they were discussing the death of Jesus, he had resurrected and was on the throne. Please sit down. The law of value. Be a master at providing solutions and you will never be ignored. The earth has too many people for you to be ignored. 7.2 billion is a lot of people. A territory can ignore you but not the entire earth. Hmm. We will all be great. And the greatest part is we will all know ourselves. It's true. You will not be great just by intention. There is a ladder that knowledge provides. One step after another, we will climb until the pride of man against the ways of God will be revealed through our manifestation. It will be very clear that any man that ignored God will pay the price generationally speaking. We want to correct a perception that has been gotten about God. God is not a nuisance to civilization. And being a child of God does not mean that you become a failure in life. Listen, you must understand this. It may take time. Agreed, your path may be unconventional. But watch the beauty and glory that comes out of you. Next law. We're discussing the spiritual laws and the mysteries that bring us to points of power. There are mysteries in the kingdom. These are the keys. Please understand this. Please understand this. The next key that I want to teach us is what I call, you know it, the mystery of exemption. Huh. That there is a key allocated by which the saints can exempt themselves. The first time we see exemption in scripture officially was when the angel of death was about to pass over the entire land of Goshen and even in Egypt. They were asked 
to bring a strategy and it was a strategy of the blood on their lintel are we together and that when the angel of death saw the blood he would pass over that is a revelation that everything should not meet you and destroy you passing over is a possibility in this kingdom the Bible says a thousand shall fall by your side and ten thousand by your right side. He said none shall come nigh thy dwelling, but only with your eyes shall you see and behold the reward of the wicked. Let me tell you, the part of scripture you choose to believe is the part that works for you. Forget about your current result. Just focus on believing it. Sometimes when you believe certain things, at the point of believing, your results will negate it, but just continue. Remember, the things that are seen are temporal. It is the things that are unseen. Superimpose your possibilities, your life. Don't sit down and say, now that I'm talking, am I not broke? Mm -mm. For our light afflictions, the Bible says, which is but for a moment. It says, it walketh in us a far more exceeding weight of glory. Why we look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are temporal, meaning a possibility exists for them to change. Exemption. Man can be exempted. And I've shared with us that there are three keys, basically. Number one is the mystery of praise. That praise is a deep mystery that can exempt men. Praise. Praise. I'm just touching it. We're not going into all of the details. Praise. One of the, the, the mysteries of exemption. Requests that should not be granted are granted. It was a young lady who danced before Herod. Danced before Herod until a prophet's head went. He prophesied, but a lady danced until a king lost his mind and said, What do you want? And was willing to allow a small girl to ruin his kingdom. And she advised her wicked mother, who said the head of John the Baptist and the head of John the Baptist went there are things that should not happen that you can make happen and there are things that should happen that you can stop from happening praise when you praise God it's called perfected praise praise that is intentional Praise is a weapon of judgment. It's a weapon of warfare. Let the high praise of God be upon their lips and a double-edged sword in their hands to execute vengeance upon their kings and to bind their nobles with the fetters of iron. It says that to execute upon them the judgment written, this inheritance, this blessing has the saints. Let me tell you something, my brothers and my sisters, when you take out time to praise God, you can praise tragedy out of your life. You can praise limitation out of your life. You've had many people's testimonies here. They love themselves and sing and dance like fools. The songs of Miriam, I will sing unto the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. He said the horses and his rider, not the horse alone. You are not safe if the rider is still alive. The horses and his rider has been thrown into the sea. Cheap victories through praise. It was in the days of Jehoshaphat when three nations came together to throw them. And he said, look, this one is not, you find it in Second Chronicles chapter 20. There's no time to read everything. And they raised their voices and began to sing. You are good and your mercy endures forever. And there was fight in the camp of the enemy. They began to kill one another. And the last person helped kill his brother. Men were going for war and they went with gold and silver. And when the army came, they found prepared blessings. Please do not underestimate the power of praise with understanding. You can dance your way out of tears. You will look stupid until the results justify you. You can sing and shout. Praise is very powerful. It's not a psychological way to motivate yourself. No. 
Are we together? Yes. Praise. <clears throat> you exempt yourself through praise. You have to know this. I've also taught you that one of the ways that you can exempt yourself is through the mystery of sacrifice. Sacrifice is very powerful. Psalms 50 and verse 5. I'm just doing a quick recap. We have all these teachings. You can go and listen to them. Gather unto me my saints, the Bible declares, they that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. By sacrifice. By sacrifice. There are covenants that you can enter not even knowing it's a covenant you entered. Sacrifice. The Bible says that Solomon sacrificed a thousand bond offerings and that night not the next day that same night the lord came to him and said solomon ask what he will and then he asked not for the life of his enemy but for wisdom to govern the people and he said you did not ask for the life of your enemy nor riches nor this because of that i will give you an understanding heart he said and with it i will give you riches i will give you wealth and honor and so on and so forth sacrifice is powerful unfortunately i know that it has been abused you know especially by women of god who try to manipulate people to just get a lot of money but just because something was was abused the word abuse comes from two words abnormal use that means when you take the use out of its its boundary of relevance just because something has been abused does not mean you throw away the baby and the bath water sacrifice is powerful you can sow your way out of realms. You can sow your way into realms. Sacrifice that is done with understanding, not manipulation, not coercion. As a testimony, one time when, when we started Koinonia, I think the, the first year or so, we're just about a year or so. I remember one time, the beginning of that year, the Lord gave an instruction to carry everything, literally everything, 0.00. .00. Carry everything and so. And I heard it, I knew it was God. I said, Lord, thank you for an opportunity for lifting. Not thank you for being a robber. God does not rob. As we carried that seed and sowed in seven days, seven days, God did a miracle that... It's only in heaven we all know what God did. But it's a, it's a mother of miracles to this ministry, even financially. Greed is your partnership with failure. When you are greedy, you have entered into an intentional alliance with failure and struggle. Please hear what I'm saying. This is true. Greed is a man's partnership with failure to keep that man in that realm. You can pray your way. You can give your way, sow your way, and then invoke the mercy of God, and so on and so forth. Let me talk about two more and we'll pray. Oh dear. But I hope you are getting these things. Because let me tell you, if you understand these principles that I show you, your life will become an unending wonder. It's true. It's not a lie. They are not opinions. Hallelujah. The next law, spiritual law, the irrefutable ministry of destiny helpers. Destiny helpers. Destiny helpers. Destiny help us. These are some of the ways of the kingdom that you must learn passionately. The irrefutable ministry of destiny help us. Hmm. Everything on earth multiplies on the basis of relationships. Please understand this. Everything on earth multiplies on the basis of relationships. 
We are relational beings. In fact, the faith work starts with a relationship. A relationship with Jesus in an experience that we know to be the new birth. Relationships matter in this life. Please listen. When you master relationships, you will tame life like a dog. I wish I had the time. But let's look at just one scripture. Second Samuel chapter 9. It's a long reading. I don't know if we can look at it. Second Samuel chapter 9. We'll start from verse 1. Destiny help us. There is, there is a teaching. And David said, ah, I answer amen for this for even myself. And David said, is there yet any that is left in the house of Saul that I may show him kindness for whose sake? Not for his sake. For Jonathan, because you are related to Jonathan. I want to change your life. Next verse. And there was in the house of one Saul a servant whose name was Ziba. And they went and called unto David. They called him unto David. And the king said unto him, Art thou Ziba? And he said, Thy servant is he. We're reading, please. Go ahead. And the king said, Is there not any in the house of Saul that I may show him kindness? And so on and so forth. And Ziba said unto the king, Jonathan had yet a son. But this son is lame on his feet mm. he's a son but he's a son that cannot help himself next verse and the king said unto him where is he and he said behold he's in Laudeba and so on and so forth verse 5 let's hurry up I just want us to get the, the central message and the, and the king David sent and fetched him out of the house of Machir and the son of Amiel from Laudeba 6 now when Mephibosheth, ah, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, was come to David, he fell on his face and did reverence. And David said, Mephibosheth, and he said, Behold thy servant, seven. And David said unto him, Fear not, for I will show thee kindness, not the Spirit of God. Man can show man kindness. A man can decide to use his influence and change your life. Please understand what I teach you. Every blessing comes from God through men to men. There is no blessing that comes from God to men. No, it comes from God through men to men. Every good thing lives from Satan through men to men or from men. For Jonathan, thy father's sake, and I will restore thee all the land of Saul, thy father. And thou shalt eat bread at my table. How long? If he ate only one day, it will be painful. It's painful to enter some realms and go out. He says continually, continually, continually. And he bowed himself and said, What is thy servant that thou shouldest look upon such a what? A dead dog as I am. Water you turn into wine Open the eyes of the blind There's no one like you yeah. None like you Water you turn say Water you turn into wine Open the eyes of the blind We are talking the God of heaven here. My God is greater, my God is stronger. Lord, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Please sit down. A man is calling himself a dog. You should even be afraid of relating with such a man. But let me tell you, my brothers and my sisters, when you find your destiny helper, not a man who decides to help you, sit down, I will tell you who they are. Glorious is the destiny of the man when you find a man that was anointed and authorized to help you. Destiny helpers are not well-wishers. No. 
destiny helpers are not kind people no it's a ministry to you it's god's time redemption system i told you there are systems of advantage in this kingdom the irrefutable ministry of destiny helpers verse 9 we're reading to 11 let's hurry up please and the king called to Ziba, Saul's servant, and said to him, Please listen. I have given unto thy master's son all that pertained unto Saul and to his house. Restoration by one encounter. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto you. Everything that was stolen shall be restored unto you. Prophesy everything that was lost shall be returned unto me. Everything that was stolen shall be returned unto me. Thou therefore and thy sons and thy servants shall till the land for him. Now listen, and thou shalt bring in the fruits that thy master's son may have food to eat. But Mephibosheth, thy master's son shall eat bread all way at my table. And now Ziba had 15 sons and 20 servants. Didn't the king see his sons? Ziba had 15 sons and 20 servants. Yet they sent him, although he had sons, they said, go and run an errand for a boy who a midwife threw by mistake and crippled his destiny. Rejoice not over me, my enemies. There is a system of advantage. I may be limited, but in this kingdom there are keys. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto me. Everything that was stolen shall be restored unto me. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto me. Everything that was stolen shall be returned unto me. Listen. And then Ziba. Why will the Bible tell us Ziba had 15 sons? That means when a man is not your destiny helper, he will watch you like this and you see him. Every destiny helper has his own children. He has his own relatives. He did not even say, Ziba, take two of your sons. Let me help you while I help this guy. Every disadvantage, you don't take blemish before the king. Did you not read Malachi? You call me a king. Why do you bring me animals with blemish? The guy already called himself a dog. The king said, it doesn't matter. May you find the man anointed by God to lift you. Please hear what I'm saying. You can be born again and not leave the potentials that are encapsulated in this kingdom. Please sit down. We'll find somewhere to pray. Mephibosheth. There are four kinds of destiny helpers. Let me run it quickly in two minutes. There is a teaching. Please get it. Number one, they are called divine connectors. Divine connectors don't have the power to help you, but they know who can help you. An example is the little slave girl. The Bible talks about Naaman, the captain of the Syrian army. He said he was a valiant man in his battles, but he was leprous. As valiant as he was, he could not meet Elijah. But there was a little girl who connected him. The young man cannot give you a job, but he knows which job is, is, on, is on application right now. The young man does not have the power to write you a check, but he knows how to connect you to someone who honors your vision. Divine connectors. Number two, the second kind of destiny helpers are called men of access. These ones are people who have influence. They are gatekeepers of industries. Who, who speaks at the gates about you matters. See, let me tell you, there is this foolishness among believers 
that they believe that just because God let me tell you this sincerely please hear me not every enemy is castable just think about what I'm saying there are enemies that are gatekeepers and their position is honored even by God you cannot cast them when God wants you to pass through that gate he will make them to show you favor the Bible says when a man's ways pleases the Lord he makes even his enemies there are gatekeepers a Cyrus can reject you he does not honor God but you are rejected how do you cast Caesar how do you cast Herod so he granted favor and when Joseph of Arimathea requested for the body of Jesus they allowed it not every man you can just pray and say let him leave that place let me tell you there are men that would not go there because their stewardship is a covenant they are not even there because of what they did they are sitting on another covenant that God's integrity must protect although they are unbelievers Ishmael today remains there to the heart of God in spite of his pungency against the gospel because he will always remember Abraham my covenant will I not break nor alter the thing that is gone from my mouth in a desert land yet they are prosperous because God is a covenant keeping God so when you see people sitting down and you are praying and praying and they are not living find out their grandfather who loved God arranged something for them with God forget that they are rebelling while they are there their children will pay for it but for that time no your prayer meets a covenant that God has vowed to honor and you'll find out that you are praying spiritual prayers that are not producing results what I tell you is called spiritual intelligence it's true. these are the kinds that you need favor influence did you not notice that God did not have to remove Pharaoh for Joseph he just caused Pharaoh to love Joseph notice that all through the lifetime of that Pharaoh they were allowed to serve their God and Pharaoh gave him he, he, the wife of the priest Potiphar, the priest of On as a wife to a man who's another God somewhere and he still gave him as a wife and in, in the land of Goshen the people can't, it was when there was another Pharaoh who knew not Joseph that was when their oppression started so even in a land that does not seem to favor you governmentally you can reign favor men of access please don't reject men of access in your life it's not simplicity you will be punished again and again for that ignorance hallelujah number three the third category of destiny helpers are called gifted people gifted people these are people who are an asset to you every pastor needs these people every father needs these people they are the people that make work easy they are the errands and the horse you need gifted people they must be sent by god you will see a big church of five thousand people and only one person is trying to learn how to play the keyboard you need to cry for gifted people are we together gifted people I have seen personally precious great anointed men and women of God but no support systems no gifted people there are families that don't have gifted people every house help is a thief every house help is a robber everybody is a I mean you there has to be a skilled person gifted people I'm saying this so that when you are praying you can ask in prayer Lord send me gifted people make my life easy You have a business because of scarcity you you hire a receptionist who continues to drive good people from your life hello is this so so so, so person's office why are you here please if you are don't you know who gave you the address and person, i'm sorry and he leaves you are inside there doing ceo and your company is failing you need to pray for gifted people no man exists as an island gifted i pray this prayer all the time and I tell you sincerely and I, 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 I stand broken before God to appreciate him for giving me and giving this ministry the treasure of gifted people the workers in this ministry are exceptionally gifted people 
has saved me the stress of any other thing I focus on the ministry of prayer and the word please you need gifted people in your life otherwise life will be hard you can't do everything by yourself hallelujah gifted people the day your wife is giving birth that's the day the quack doctor is on duty you, you see what is happening the day your child is sick that's the day your serious doctor wants to give an injection and he experiments around your child to make him like Mephibosheth the midwife that threw Mephibosheth she was called a midwife what happened that she threw the guy down do you know the kind of fall you have to throw a child to break the legs and scatter the child Lord send me gifted people in the name of Jesus Christ and the last of all very quickly they are called burden bearers the last of the destiny helpers are called burden bearers during the your down times in life you must pray that God will send you people who don't love you because of the throne they love you because of who you are the flat tree of success can kill people can clap when there is a crown on your head but when you are at the cross you will need burden bearers and Jesus was on his way to Golgotha the Bible records and he was he was bleeding and that he was losing blood and was about to die he would have died there and if he died there there would be problem because he needed to die a cause not just to die a man cause is the man that hangs upon the tree he says that the blessings of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles that we might receive the promise of the spirit through faith so if he died on the way that's not redemption that's obituary and then they called on a burden bearer called Simon of Cyrene the black man the nigger and he the guy gladly carried the cross let me tell you I pray that you will find people in your life that even when you stand like David in the cave of Adullam, the Bible says mighty men, they came to David. They saw him hiding and they said, you will become our king. It's not everybody that is looking for results. There are people who will stay with you. As the landlord is driving you, they will stand there and say, no, I will not run away. Men are selfish by design. Please, every leader, hear me. You need to trust God for the grace for real burden bearers. Men and women who can cry with you. They can say Hosanna, but when you're on your way to the cross, you will only see Mary and John there. Burden bearers. There are men of God when they are, we start building project, everybody just runs away. When the building is completed, people come and dance again to acknowledge God. Burden bearers. Even the disciples ran away. But there was a woman who said, let me risk my life. I'm on my way to the tomb to go and purify his body. I hope you know that was why she went. She carried to go and purify his body. What if she died on the way? A burden bearer will be like Ruth to Naomi your God will be my God and your people will be my people many people when they are in their dark days they never find helpers who will not celebrate with you when things are going well but you must pray for burden bearers there is an attack on the church and someone is standing to say pastor I love you I will stand by you all the way are we together I'm brother still from your house and someone comes and says is there food for the next two weeks i will be cooking for you don't tell anybody i have to stay here i hear you want to buy back another car please my salary of two months is yours don't say there are no people like that there are real burden bearers it takes prayer and spiritual understanding listen these are the forces that work in the life of others and while you are seeing these things happen, there are burden bearers. Again, I thank God for the privilege. You know, many men of God, for many men of God, their greatest fear, in fact, many successful people, their greatest fear is whether they will have people stand by them when things go bad. 
I tell you, God has taken that fear out of my life. God has given me not only trusted people, not only gifted people, not everybody old, but there are people God has put in my life that I know if they put a gun today, they will stand and take that bullet. Lord, you took my pain away and then you gave me joy. You're my peace, my melody in the center of the storm. You gave me a brand new song to sing to you. That's why I will lift up my voice. You've taken the pain and the sorrow away. You've given me peace on the night. There's no need to cry because you're always with me. You're my father, my everything. Listen, you must pray to God and cry that there be burden bearers will look at your wound. Listen. Listen, please sit down. We'll pray shortly. Listen, the Bible talks, Jesus himself was teaching. And Jesus spoke about a man. And robbers waylaid that man. Are we together? And he was on the, a priest came. And a priest saw him and left going to church. A Pharisee came and left him. But there was a man called Good Samaritan. No name. Good Samaritan. He was identified by where he was coming from, his territory, and his character. Good Samaritan. And the man sat down. He bandaged this man, took him to a private inn to keep him, and said, I will take care of him. I'm about to go and do something. When I come back, whatever the cost is, that's a burden bearer. That's not an advisor. There are people who will come and see your child your daughter, your son, and look at things, work and say, ah, what is this? You mean he has been writing Wayek for five years? I will conduct a personal tutorial. When you see a burden bearer, you will think they charm them. They will carry your own load on their own head. You are planning for marriage and you find a burden bearer, you have entered the Sabbath. The person may not be a millionaire, he will be collecting 100,000 and depositing 60,000. Say, this is my contribution. There are real burden bearers. Not everyone on earth is wicked. You have just been meeting wicked people because you have been allowing life choose for you. You select your possibilities in prayer. This ministry, by the grace of God, has been privileged to have burden bearers. Men and women who arise by the Spirit financial burden bearers credibility burden bearers there are people today across several nations of the world some of them are listening to me right now they have taken it as a mandate but i've never met them taking it as a mandate to ensure that the teachings that come from this ministry get to the ends of the earth there are all kinds of social media platforms that is all they do as if god did not call them themselves burden bearers It is painful to be alone. It is painful to be alone. There are many parents today who have raised all kinds of children. They had just five or six of their own children, but they raised up to 50 children of other people. And these people in old age will be in the hospital. Are we together now? Looking for one million for a treatment. And all those 40 people they raised, not one person can stand up to be responsible to say no i remember history i will never allow mama die like this some of them will have private hospitals some of them will have schools you need a burden bearer in your life a burden bearer in your life i've had the privilege by the grace of god in my own capacity to be a burden bearer to certain people and i'm happy doing it 
a burden bearer will go all out to turn your cry into weeping that's his assignment to insist till you laugh why are you about to go away so i'm in 200 level my father just died my mother just died they don't sit down and say are you from the same village that's not a burden bearer is your what was your father did he know my father mm. i stand and i say this come every semester receive this school fees for give me your account number i will be putting 10 10 000 until you graduate and when you are about to graduate let me know so that i will ensure that you have a job now you have a job you are doing well sir this is the wife i want to marry oh really do you have an auditorium we are trusting god because how much do you have hundred thousand take one million go and pay for an auditorium that's a burden bearer there are churches that have had the privilege of burden bearers that's why they don't announce we have a project of you know god designed men to be burden bearers this crying on stage for money every week no a real burden bearer will sit down and find needs why is this pastor's shoe removing that shoe would the pastor would never wear that shoe again had this shoe no no it was embarrassing next time you go and buy ah, we noticed that this child was crying and nobody could buy bobo next week there's a carton of bobo for children that's a burden bearer and may you be a burden bearer too because it it is wicked for you to want a burden bearer in your life and not want to be that for another you have to sow that seed of being a burden bearer may your wife be your burden bearer husband and may your husband may, may, what's the next one now may your husband be a burden bearer wife be, because listen let me tell you if your spouse is not a burden bearer you will see what will happen the day you are in the hospital you've seen these things happen some persons are in the hospital some people are selling their property hoping that they will die and then they later come and leave it's, it's when they are alive they now find out that half of the estate had gone in expectation that you would die is that a spouse this is why we will continue by the spirit of god listen to me let me just digress for 10 seconds this is why we will continue to guide people you know sometimes people make very very poor marital choices carelessly these are the things to think about father is this person a burden bearer not for now for the days that come there are women whose husbands are confined on the wheelchair and you will see them celebrating their birthday 60 years with the man he can't talk he can't walk yet she's laughing they say say something about your husband say even if we return in this life i want him to still be my husband that's a burden bearer my generation hear me open your eyes and your spirit and your understanding and not make a catastrophic mistake that would destroy your life burden bearers in my life i have seen this there are men of god who have taken it upon themselves to ensure that every platform that can afford me the opportunity to teach the ways of the kingdom is there i am amazed at the invitations that continue to come from around the world and you will hear that one pastor went and he took his time and sat and said look this and that and that and burden bearers the lord gave the word he said great is the company of them that published it if you don't have a burden bearer you will pay for everything the one who will help you drive your car you will pay the one who will help you cook you will pay the one who will help your child to not cry in church you will pay because they are not burden bearers naomi told ruth you can go i'm an old woman don't worry at least my sons are dead i can't leave you please just go live your life leave this old woman and ruth said no way no way mama i'm not going anywhere that means even if my future is ruined let it be at the instance 
of our relationship. Your God will be my God. Your people will be my people. Our time is gone. Ah. Can you spare me five minutes to talk on the law of honor? Will I end without teaching this? As you are agreeing to give me five minutes, it also means you are agreeing that if you don't have a legitimate reason to see me, you will go home after the grace. Make him ma, make him ma, make him ma. Make him ma, make him ma, make him ma. Make him ma, make him ma. Let's sit down. This spiritual mystery, second only to the law of encounter, is the greatest truth I have found. The law of honor. The mystery behind the sudden rising of people. Like a charm. A man just evaporates and you don't see him again. And the only place you find him is above. Honor. What is honor? Honor is the discerning. Please listen. Five minutes and we're done. Honor is the discerning. Honor is the celebrating and then if need be honor is the rewarding of a man for their uniqueness and their usefulness the discerning the celebrating and the rewarding of a man please help him out, for their uniqueness Honor is the number one reason for the sudden rise of people. Please, if you can, I recommend that you listen to my teaching that I did at the King's Court, RCCG, the King's Court. Listen to it. I spoke on the book of Esther. The book of Esther starts in a very interesting way. Please lend me five minutes. We're still at that. The Bible starts by flaunting the glory of a man, a king called Ahasuerus. The Bible says that he was a king over 127 provinces to tell us the extent of his, his might. And then the Bible tells us about a woman called Vashti. Are we together? So the next scene starts with the dishonor of a woman. The king calls for Vashti to come. To come and you know show herself as it was in ancient customs before his friends and Vashti refused when she refused the king being a very good man he kept quiet with the issue but then the advisors of the king said uh, 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 uh. this woman is in a position where she's a model to every woman if you permit this dishonor our wives and our women will start the same thing too do something about it and Vashti is banished. Are we together? That means everything was in place in a palace. The throne is still there. The treasures are still there. But dishonor is about to divide a kingdom into two. Everything still in place. Intelligence is there. The security there. Her man is there. But one woman's dishonor is about to bring conflict and tear down 127 provinces and then the king dismisses the wife there is no record of Vashti saying sorry there is no record of Vashti saying an audience with the king I apologize no to hell with your palace and she leaves scene three a call is made for all of the young virgins around the territory and then in a place called Shushan, are we together now? 
the little knees of a gatekeeper called Mordecai is fetched and brought before the king. Honor. She honored the man and she came. Honor and favor works peri pasu. There may not be time to talk about favor, but if you, if, you, if you practice honor automatically, you will find favor. Favor is the reward for honor. Are we together? So when she came there, the Bible says in Esther chapter 2, please give us verse 15 and then we'll go to verse 17, that there was a grace for favor that was upon her. Now when the turn of Esther came and so on and so forth, she went to Haggai, required from him the last sentence, and Esther obtained favor in the sight of all them that looked upon her. Favor is a grace that works with sight. When the, when the grace for favor is upon you, only a blind man will ignore blessing you. Provided there is a man that has the eye that can see, they are compelled to bless you. Verse 17. And the king loved Esther above all the women. She was not alone, but the king loved Esther. And she obtained grace and favor in his sight more than all the virgins. So other virgins obtained favor too, but her surpassed them. So that he set a royal crown upon her head and made her queen instead of Vashti. Are we together? And then when you read on, you will find out that a lot began to happen. And she declared a fast because of the threat of her man, his plot to destroy the people of God. And she went to the king and he lifted the golden censer, the scepter, and invited and said, what should I do? A wise woman, look at honor. Honor is a weapon. In, that, in the book of Esther, there is no priest. In the book of Esther, there is no prophet. In the book of Esther, there is no apostle. In the book of Esther, there is no war. There is only a woman. But she defeated everybody with a tool and a weapon called honor. She honored her man to his grave. Honor is a weapon. It not only lifts, it can kill. A wise, a foolish woman would have told the king, and said king her man wants to destroy us will you watch your beautiful bride go see that but a wise woman when he gave her an opportunity her honor she discerned his mood and she said oh king i want to give you what the first wife didn't give you it was her not honoring you that took her out of the place grant me the opportunity to present a banquet and the king said finally I find a woman who understands that with all humility, I am king over 127 provinces. Talk about my province first before my request. Don't, before your, don't come before me and request. Talk about the province. Don't ignore the achievement. It's a formula for attracting the attention of great men. Don't come before a great man and say, I'm broke. No. Are you not aware his company is doing well? You start like Esther. The province and the palace and his interest then your needs come later so when you go to this king called your father when you stand it is hallowed be your name then thy kingdom come then your will O king be done on earth then when you are done then give us this day our daily it's a formula the king's interest first before your needs so Esther prepares a banquet and then notice, she also requested, please let her man also come. When you fight a great man's friend too soon, even if it's your enemy, you will pay for it. Friendship is not built in one day. You will not fight it emotionally. Her man had done many good things for the king. For one woman's plea to make him destroy the man. No. She prepared the banquet. The king liked it. He said, do it again. He said, with all pleasure, my king. Honor. Remember, somebody is dying, no. But honor is the one killing the person. And then another banquet is prepared. And then the Bible says, 
she prepared a feast called the feast of wine that was where the whole thing came the feast of wine when the king drank wine and was happy he now said okay what is it and he said oh king i have a plea say it wine you wait until wine comes There is one who is threatening your queen and threatening your people. Who is that? That Haman. Look at a wise king. He didn't comment. He stood up and went to his garden. Went around his lounge and was just thinking. And while he was thinking, you see, but when, when it's time up for your enemy, anything will be problem. The man went to the, key, the queen to kneel down. You know how you kneel down and just say, kill me here. The king now, ah! You are even trying to rape my wife on top. That's the end of it. Couldn't he beg from a distance? He now came and knelt down close to the queen. He, he's just doomed. And listen, the moment that happened, watch this. Haman went back to his wife. Before that time, he went back to the wife and complained about what happened. And the wife said, who is this person? He said, Esther. He said, a Jew, you are finished. You are fighting a covenant, not a woman. You are finished. A man, didn't you select who to fight? Not everybody is fightable. You went to go and fight a covenant. And that was the end of it. A man is hung on that same gallow. Mordecai occupies a man's position. Esther occupies Vashti's position. So who said God cannot replace men? Who said God cannot lift? Please hear me. Honor is powerful. Dishonor is dangerous. There is only one reason why men fail in life. Carry this message. Dishonor to God. Dishonor to men. Dishonor to principles. One more time. Dishonor to God. Dishonor to men. And dishonor to principles this is why people fail in life every time I have the privilege of going to any church or ministry to minister I will never never dishonor the man of God dishonor their protocol dishonor their system I will walk within what is provided it's called honor it's not weakness Honor your father and your mother that your days may be long. I tell you why many young people are dying like chickens. Dishonor. 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 The law of honor has changed my life. The law of honor has lifted me, lifted this great ministry. You can earn a living practicing honor. honor is a stream of income when they say mention your streams of income don't just mention real estate and shop and poultry say honor a wise man will clap for you honor is powerful it can change your life in this kingdom who hates you does not matter but who likes you matters honor is powerful I continue to walk this law like a chess and you walk this law there is no power in existence I don't just use the precious workers in this ministry I truly love them and I honor them we prepare a bus to carry you after service as a way a token of honor honor is very powerful let me tell you this when God makes men like you no matter what is done a, within the context of that generation you have entered your sabbath it is not enough for god to like you alone the man he uses must like you god can tell pastor femi come pastor femi i'm rounding up god can tell pastor femi to bless me he can reject that instruction while he's struggling with obedience i'm suffering i will be seen in the vision that my testimony has landed but it will remain in the dream 
God agreed, a man disagreed and paying the price. And the key will be honor. Honor. Is what we continue to teach in this ministry. Please hear me. You are part of this spiritual family. One of the signature traits of your life must be honor. Don't talk to people anyhow. You see elderly people, you insult everybody. Huh? No. An elderly woman is carrying something mad. Please, can I help you? Oh, I'm a man of God. So what? Demonstrate the fact that you are called by your intelligence. Don't dishonor our children. You see my children here. Even if I'm not going to see anybody on the line, I must see these children. Nobody fights these small children and have me laugh at them. No. I will hug and they should jump on me and rumple me with their cloth. No problem. If we don't honor them, our future is dead. Honor is powerful. You see a wealthy man and he said, these people are just lucky. All these people. How can a young man live? If not, uh, I hear your father was this and that. You see, dishonor is why many people are poor and broke. They see every rich man and just think he was dash, he was luck. No. Every successful man, especially a successful young man. You no know, one time we were traveling somewhere and I sat close to someone and I was sleeping. It was so bad. You know this kind of sleep, you are going like this all around because you are tired. And then, you know, the person was trying to, ah, you're a young man. What kind of sleep is this? I just looked at him and I nodded my head. I said, you see, this is the kind of thing you are talking about. You are not asking why I'm seated where you are seated at my age. It's, it's, not, it's, it's not, I don't mean to be sarcastic. I don't mean to be sarcastic. The first question is, how did you get here? Listen. Please don't dishonor anybody. You have a job. And someone does not have a job. The person who does not have a job, you can honor your way. I've taught it commanding result. Listen to it. One day, get up in the morning and polish the shoe of the one who has gotten a job. Don't say it's my younger brother. It's my younger sister. It's my, when I was in, in, in SS, uh, uh, SS3, it was all those, all those superstitious, trado African approach to life. You, you, you will be punished again and again. I have a great deal of respect for people who honor me. Sincerely. If you, if you, if you trivialize what I represent, I will not fight you. But I will never prophesy to you. You will not be, you will not be close. You will not be around my life again. Because I'm going to waste my time. I don't love, I don't hate you. I will not do that. I will never dishonor or despise any man called young or old. No, I honor all men. Beware of people who have mastered the art of trivializing what you represent. They may be sincere, but they are dangerous to your growth. Not to flatter you, but please, if you have 127 provinces, it is not a bad thing to have a feast. O oh, Ahasuerus. 127 provinces is not a kiosk. Let us learn to practice honor. Some of you need to go back and appreciate your parents. Your father is a prof. Your mother is a prof. You are there sweeping the ground in life. You can say, Daddy, Mommy, please. Whatever I have done, whatever needs to come on my head, how much is chicken that you cannot buy and prepare? I'm telling you this. There are parents who never went to school, but they raised 10 children. Not one of them is an arm robber. You think it's just, there is a grace there. One child is about to kill you. Go and meet them. Buy something they like and say, please, place something on my destiny. When I was about to start ministry, I met my father and my mother. And I told them, I said, I told my mother, I said, you are a pastor's daughter. Your father was a pioneer. My grandfather was the first cooking president. The first cooking president and is that pioneer grace I want I knelt down when you are too big to honor you are too big to receive adaptation is proof of honor great people are very difficult people don't want people to lift you at your terms 
that is pride when you want someone to lift you adaptation is proof of honor there are fathers of faith today that want to invite me and you know sometimes our precious fathers respectfully speaking they also don't know the schedule but I've helped the protocol to see just be open be open I will see how I will adjust anything that you stand and say I'm apostle Joshua Selman and crash down honor is powerful you are the one who loses when you dishonor men we have to stop here teach your children to honor don't see a stranger and come and slap him you spank the child and, and, and prophesy to the child and say I did not give birth to this in the name of Jesus Christ you must change you must become like your father pamper your child to have something some produce something that would destroy you there are people about to start ministry and will meet everybody like a colleague they are failing they don't they don't have the influence and the credibility and they will not listen they come to everybody ah, i'm just one of those i hear you are the femi abi the, the femi pastor femi sorry you see already even if he prays for you i assure you even if you fall down you didn't get anything yes falling down has never been the requirement for reception it is honor the door you dishonor closes towards you i never find a man that carries something i need and i will keep quiet with it no one day god will give you an opportunity to see how i honor the fathers you will be surprised it's just that honor at that level always happens in the secret i had the privilege to pray two weeks ago at Papa Ia Deboe's prayer room. I was granted the opportunity and the tour, and I said, Please grant me the grace. I said, What is there? Every prayer room, what is it? Is it a shrine? You, you see this kind of thinking. You, every result has mysteries that support it. When I laid down, I prayed. One of the things I told God is, Lord, I honor this our servant. You have made him a voice. A few years ago, he went to. David Yongicho for prayers for that church growth grace. A few years later, Yongicho called him to come and pray for him. Ah. I made sure that I treated every staff there. The staff were the apostle, you are the apostle, pray for me. I said, No, I know that I will pray for you, but. I came here to carry a grace. Oh no. The person seated next to you is carrying a grace that you may not, you may need but don't have. Are we together? Yes. The gentleman may not have money but he has character. He's a grace and it's transferable. The person seated next to you, no matter what happens, there is a covenant of supplies. Quarter to shame, help must rise from somewhere. You think it's not an issue to honor? Some of our mothers and fathers seated here, the kind of graces and covenants that operate on their lives. They can just look at you and say, bless you, and that's it. And many of our proud generation of young people who do not understand honor is why we continue to pay for it. We never rise, we never shine, and our light never comes. Please rise up on your feet. I apologize for taking our time. Hold hands with someone. I'm going to pray. These are the ways of the kingdom. Listen and listen again. I speak this not in an attempt to make a boast or anything but let me tell you something i have been caught up in the realm of the spirit many times and so the things that i tell you they are not just things i read in the bible there is a difference between what you have read and what you have experienced are you listening to me now do you realize that a believer can no longer be possessed with a demon are you listening to me because light and darkness cannot dwell in the same place as far as your spirit is concerned but what we do not realize is that your soul is another faculty on its own composed of your will your 
intellect, your mind, and your mind is a store of thoughts, the realm of your soul. Are you listening to me? And one thing we do not understand is that the Bible says in 1 Peter, I believe, chapter 1, verse 9, it says, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your soul. What is the Bible saying? It said, there is a remaining part of salvation that has not yet happened to you. He said it's called the end of your faith, the completeness. He says the salvation of your soul. What is the salvation of the soul? It's what we generally know to be called the renewing of the mind. But it's, it's not, not only that. I need you to understand. The Bible says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of, and he gives us a strange name. He calls something stronghold. He said, casting down every imagination comes from the Greek word Yezah. And every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of Christ. Then he says, bringing every thought to the obedience of Christ. Question, was Paul speaking to unbelievers? Are you listening to me? Another issue, Paul looks at the Galatian church and says, Oh foolish Galatians. He said, who has bewitched you? Why will Paul use that kind of word for Christians? He says, all foolish Galatians, why have you allowed Satan access to the realm of your soul? Are you listening to me? And this is where a lot of people miss it. While it is true that in Christ, the Bible says, blotting out every handwriting and ordinances that spoke against us, he nailed it to the cross. Hallelujah. The Bible says we have been called out of every tribe, every tongue, every nation. But what we do not realize, Christians, is that like people, uh, Kenyon, E.W. Kenyon will say, there is a legal side of redemption and there is a vital side of redemption. The legal side of redemption is reality as seen from the perspective of the Father. Are you listening to me? The vital side is you establishing that reality so that it becomes in the earth and in your life as it is in the heavens. The Bible says forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. It never said it's settled in the earth. It takes the faith and the operation of the Son of God to cause the word to be settled in the earth and in your life. And now what people do not understand, and hear me friends, I bless God for all of the teachings and the buildings and the equippings. But the army of God that must rise, we must have knowledge of how to stand upon our victory. So when you get born again, are you listening to me? Satan no longer has access to your spirit. But the trouble is this. If you were only using your spirit, then you would have been perfect. But now your soul is still there. The faculties of your mind your will, your intellect. Are you listening to me? The pornography you watch, you still remember. Are you listening to me? The, although you are born again, the bottle of beer that you took, the taste of it is still in you. Come on, are you listening to me? Don't look at me as if I'm a Christian. Hallelujah. That sense of wickedness and bitterness is, is there. And the trouble is this. The word of God. Now this I'm explaining to you the ministry of the word. To the believer. Hear me. I'm going to be redefining concepts. I need. If this is all I do tonight. It is very important. Because we need men and women who are knowledgeable. Are you listening to me? For me. I've, I don't see it as pride in ministry. When people are always running. Coming. Man of God. Pray for me. There is a demon in our family. There is this and that. There is this. And this is why we are taking our time to teach. It is our goal that every one of us becomes strong and fortified. So that we can now go back to our homes and our ministries and our territories. And begin to legislate out of knowledge and understanding. Any ministry that makes the people totally dependent on the man of God. Such that when he's not around, they cannot do anything. There is a name for it. The Bible calls it witchcraft and manipulation. I don't care which ministry. Are you listening to me? Jesus was with 12 people for three and a half years. 
and he was confident to know there were still some other things that he had not completed in his course curriculum even when he resurrected he still stayed with them and he finished everything he said i am confident there are many things i can tell you but you cannot bear them now he says how be it when the spirit of truth is come he shall guide you into all truth for he shall take up the things that are mine and shall give it unto you and he left them and the people did not fail a true apostolic generation is that generation where everyone stands tall. Everyone is equipped with the knowledge of the things of the spirit. It's not enough. It is not our pride to just record testimonies of cancers and all of these things. It is our pride to know that the next miracle service will just arrange 5 or 15 people. And we are just worshipping while the remaining people are healing and raising crutches and moving with people. This is proof that we are moving forward. So for those of you in ministry, there is need for us to redefine our paradigm. When you become the man of God doing everything alone, and when without you the system cripples, you are an idol. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? So we must train a church that is full of understanding. Not men and women who are gullible. Many believers do not have interest in the word of God. We only have interest for results and power and solution. That's why we like prophets. Don't waste my time teaching me the word of God. Just tell me, will this business work or not? And if no, what is the solution? Can I sow my way into changing your prophecy? Balaam, speak to me and let me go. But that's the kind of generation... That the spirit of error will sweep and will be crippled under the trap of Satan. But the Lord is raising a generation of men and women who are empowered by the spirit. That not only will you receive healings and will you be empowered. But you will be equipped in grace and faith. One day Peter and John, after Jesus had left, they were just discussing, wondering what they were going to do with their lives. And suddenly... The Bible makes us to understand that they saw a man at the gate beautiful. They said, now the master has trained us and he gave us a name. He gave us an authority. And they looked at him. They said, today is this day, Mr. Man. Now it's time. See, our greatest joy in this place is to see everyone reproducing the things that you see in our lives. Are you listening to me? To see that everyone is walking in grace and power. There's nothing wrong when you come to receive miracles. That's why we are always there. Because sometimes when you are learning and growing in the things of the spirit. After you stretch and your hand cannot reach. That's why God puts us there. We hold your hands and say we were once there. We understand. There's nothing to be ashamed of. That you prayed and prayed and prayed. And the sickness didn't go. And you had to run to chemists. You run to us and we say... Mr. Man, go to the chemist and get a drug. When you are well, you can keep searching. A day will come, you will build fortification. There's nothing to be afraid of. This is a school. God is training an army. But our greatest pride is not to sit down and see a queue of hundreds of people waiting for counseling. And you ask the person, what is the issue? And the person tells you something cried in my room. Ha ha. The reason why many men of God have not taken up the challenge to build God's people is because they are benefiting from the weaknesses of their members. Let me tell you what it does for them. Number one, it does not put pressure on them to keep building upon the word. Because when you have men and women who are gullible, you know in this place, if you stand upon this altar, you must be prepared. Because then, while you are standing here, there are people with prophetic radar scanning you. When you are standing upon this altar, you must confess your sins, do everything you need to do before you stand. This is not the kind of altar that you just stand and shout. No, 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 no. Somebody might be sitting but standing from a mountain. God has been equipping us. He will watch you make your pride and do your error. I thank God. You see, let me tell you something. This altar here is not all you see. It's high. If you stand here, you will know. You will shake up and down in the spirit until every flesh shakes out of you. Because when you look at the sensitivity and the perception of those listening to you, you know that you cannot teach them error. And they nod their head gullibly. No, sir. And this is what we are achieving. We are not raising arrogant people. We are only raising men and women of understanding. So that when you go somewhere, somewhere and everybody say, run. And everybody come and lick the man of God's leg. And see everybody going like a dog. Gullible generation. No knowledge and understanding. And even when it is truly God that has said that, 
you will have a confirmation in your spirit that although this is a, a stupid experience, but then God is in it. Are you listening to me? And so I want to teach us the ministry of the word. Because on one side, we have believers saying once you are born again, that's all. There's no business with Satan. You are refined. You are in Christ. Satan, you are seated up. Satan does not have a place in your life. But the people are dying. They are still seeing causes follow them. We, we can pretend it and paint ourselves and speak in tongues in church and jump up and down. Your brother didn't get a job. You didn't get a job. Your sister didn't get a job. What do we call that? You may not want to call it the name, but what is it called? Are you listening to me? And you are born again. You are filled with the Holy Spirit. You are not married. Your brother is not married. You have refused to say in the name of Jesus, nothing is wrong with my life. But you are seeing the same thing. There is a, a thin line between stupidity and faith. The difference is knowledge, understanding, and light. Are you listening to me? And then on one side, here we have people always talking about Satan, always talking about deliverance, always talking about the strength of Satan, talking about everything, level this, 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 level 777, and they say, I met one demon, do you know how strong Satan is? And you see us come, I mean, we just imagine it, and people put graphic images in their churches with Satan having the horn, and when they talk, you're even shaking in the church. They finish teaching you about Satan and all of these things, and we have believers who are always thinking about Satan. So where is the balance? because in both faces we see the power of God let it rain let it rain open the floor of heaven hallelujah now watch this the moment you get born again is your spirit man listen to me this is why is there are certain people that because of the impact of the experience of their new birth they get born again they fall under the anointing they get filled with the holy spirit they begin to pray in tongues and even lay hands on people and they are healed are you listening to me and then what happens the men of god who do not have discernment just look and they call the person and say you go and be a head of our ministry somewhere and you do not realize that this is a babe by every standard the gifts of the spirit is not equivalent to spiritual maturity it takes a walking with the spirit it takes an activity of the word of god and this is what we are teaching tonight is miracle service the miracle is happening to you no 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 the first miracle is not your your body is children's bread we are coming to that are you listening to me Now, but let me explain to you that concept of deliverance. Because our concept of deliverance that we have in our generation is very sad, very sorrowful, very disheartening. Hallelujah. Where believers go every day, every week, every month, every year, I need you to understand that there is something I will show you. And you will see from the word of God. It is never God's desire, listen to me, that a, be a believer keep being delivered, 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 then is it true that the authority of Christ is above Satan? Are you listening to me? However, you will need it all the time until you listen to the remaining part of my teaching. Are you listening to me? The Bible says, the word of God begins to bring deliverance what is deliverance deliverance means you are separated from things you are separated from mindsets are you listening to me you are separated from strongholds Be deliverance is not all about falling and manifesting and foaming in your mouth there is an instant when we begin to pray now for some some of you are sitting down quietly just minding your business when we begin to pray some of you don't know when you are out here rolling on the floor you see, you don't even know what is wrong with you, but you are born again and you are tongue talking. The word of God does what we know to be deliverance. It separates you. 
it builds you. Are you listening to me? It begins to break your mind from the ordinances of the past and the things that give Satan access to your life. Jesus speaking says, Satan cometh to me and does not find anything of himself. That means for as long as Satan finds some things that belong to him, he has legal access to your life. Are you listening to me? Jesus said the condition for me to defeat Satan and death is that he does not have anything for a kingdom that is divided against itself shall not stand. And so while you are born again, you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you're walking in life and power, your mind is not renewed. That's why one day you see somebody who loves God. A pastor, after preaching and doing everything, he just runs to his room. After praying in tongues, he spends three hours watching pornography. And even him, he doesn't know what is wrong with him. And he's embarrassed to admit that there is something torturing his spiritual life. It's easy to come out and wear suit and just stand and speak. But we all have the things that lack of knowledge has brought into our lives. That humility, that's why the Bible says you must receive the word of God with meekness. Because sometimes it will need to redefine your philosophy and break you out. Bible says strong meat belongs to them who by reason of use have attained unto full age and have exercised their spiritual senses in order to discern between good and evil. We have a very weak generation of Christians. This is why Satan can ride through churches. Men will be sitting down. Demons will come and hold mics and preach and heal and deliver and do everything and there is no discernment whatsoever. Are you listening to me tonight? So the first ministry of the word in your life is deliverance. This is the reason why, hear me, you break away from all the access points that Satan has in your life. There are two ways that Satan can have access to a man's life. Number one, what we know to be covenants. Number two, ignorance. That's where we have things like um, inheritance, family curses and all of these things now i need you to know that these things are not fake are you listening to me if there is something called generational blessings there must be something called generational curses the only challenge is we stretch it beyond these limits and we begin to speak and make it look like everybody everywhere i don't have any generational curse following me although there is because i've seen it in the life of others are you listening to me the word of God separates you. So by the build up of the word, what happens? All of the demons and the strongholds that are gaining ground in your life, whether by direct encounter with the power of God, such as a miracle service like this, are you listening to me? Or the intake of God's word. All of these demons and strongholds, listen to me, that have stayed in your, that have gained access to you, Whenever they leave, this is where many believers miss it out. The Bible says that demon leaves and he goes round and comes back and does what? Finds the place swept, clean. And the Bible says you are only clean through the word. So that means there is an operation of the word that made that man that clean. But what we do not realize is there are two faces to the word. One is as a weapon of deliverance. He sent forth his word and his word he let them. The sent word heals and delivers. But when the word of God is taught, it edifies. What is edification? It builds up spiritual fortification. Are you listening to me? So that now you are not only clean through the word, you are empowered and according to Colossians chapter 3 verse 16, it says, let the word of Christ dwell in you in all richness so that whenever Satan comes, he will not find access in your life again. There are many believers who go for deliverance, fall under the anointing, roll up and down, foam in their mouth and get up and they say, thank you Jesus. Lord, we give you praise. And the demons come back again and they still see themselves worst walking in the things and they say ah, I was healed I'm sure I was healed I was healed I mean I know but now I'm seeing the sickness returning again of course because there is a fortification are you listening to me it's not enough that's why we take three weeks in a month to teach the word are you listening to me and then at miracle services like this we allow the power of God to set free, to heal, to deliver. Let me tell you something. If all we would do in Koinonia is receive, prophesy, 
we will have a generation. You will receive results because it's the sent word. But the sent word only heals and delivers. The sent word does not equip and build. The sent word is sent on a mission. It, it accomplishes what it was sent to do. And there is the word that is sent to accomplish and return back. There is the word that is sent to stay with you. If my word dwell, if, if you dwell in me and my words dwell, not go and return. There is an operation of the word of God that is meant to stay with you so that as you are full of the word, you become like Christ in power and authority and grace. And there is a spiritual fortification. And at that point you can speak that yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. Why? For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff. At that point you become full of the word and you don't need to fear all these devils and witches and wizards again and so it's not enough for deliverance to come it's not enough for you to be healed it's not enough for you to be free it's not enough for you to say okay there are curses and things that come from families and god is breaking you free it's not enough to say i'm born again you must invest in the word that's why it's important to find your let me tell you something and i say it with every sense of seriousness if you find yourself in ministry where all you receive is prophecy, 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 you are not going to grow. Are you listening to me? You will receive results, dramatic and fearful results, but you will never grow into spiritual things. The word must be taught. To send it means to declare it as it is. The word performs its operation. But when it is taught, we teach you the principles of the kingdom that empower you and equip you to stand. Hallelujah. The teaching ministry is the hope of preparing the army of God. Without a teaching ministry, we are finished. What is another name for your lecturer? What does he do? He spends four years expounding, teaching you principles. That's the reason why you can have a university 30, 40 years. And every time you graduate a student, say from engineering, you have certain expectations because he has been taught. These are principles. In Church of the Most High, I need us to arise and realize that without the word of God seated in our spirits, we will keep going back. Satan will come out and you will keep coming in. That's what is happening to many of our families. We have, I'm not against them, you can have them, but without this understanding, you will only frustrate yourself. We have monthly deliverances, weekly deliverances, all kinds of deliverances. And the truth is, most of the people are not interested in growth. They are just interested in results. And since they told them that it's this witch or that wizard that is stopping them, every time we go to meet a prophet, we just want instant solution. That's why many people are not interested in teaching ministries. It takes an unusual grace of God to keep a crowd to listen to the word. Because when crowds come, they come out of their lust and selfishness. Not many people are interested in growth and for the power of God to touch them. You want a man of God that just comes up and says, everybody stand up. And they say, lift your right hand. Bring a, a white handkerchief, a red one. If there is not, we have it here for sale. Are you listening to me? And by the time we like we like instructions not because we love god we want quick things we we like by cutting processes so all of you who want husbands quickly run come and drop one thousand naira, and then i will pray for you you can drop the money and fall under the anointing and roll and go back to your seat you will never get consistent results so we have programmed ourselves to depend day and night and we have a lot of men of God who look and they call you. They call some of our fathers. Bring 30,000 and say, no. He say, I will shut the heavens over you and your business. And the man is running. He say, hey, hey, hey. The prophet said he will shut the heavens. Find 30,000. Even if you don't have, give me. Tell somebody, grow up. That's why we are criticized day and night. Because our job is to open the body to the truth of God's word unadulterated. And the dangerous thing is it puts pressure on all of us men of God. Because the moment your members begin to have light, you as the man of God cannot sit down again. It will put pressure on you to keep pressing. And this is what many men of God do not want. 
We don't want anyone to challenge you. The moment you stand and you are looking and you say, I see a river. 50 people are also seeing that river. So you can't lie. You can't just say, I see a river. Ah, the people have been trained. Their eyes are open. They are only sitting quietly, but they are seeing. You tell lies, somebody walks up to you and says, sorry, yo, not to offend you. But was that, is it not a crown? I saw it too. That means your prayer life has to be alive. That means your word life has to be alive. That means the day you rise up from the bed of fornication and come up, there will be discernment. It puts pressure on you to walk in truth. And this is what many people do not want. But God is raising an apostolic generation that will not only receive miracles, but will be empowered. Not to be arrogant and condemn people. Are you listening to me? But to be fortified spiritually that will command results. That's the reason why our meetings are not just to heal, to deliver, but it's an impartation. Are you listening to me? And that's what some of you are going to receive tonight. Impartation. As I'm speaking to you right now, many of you are receiving impartation. It doesn't take more than one minute for you to be healed. Are you listening to me? It does. The word of God is not so slow. But the word of God is what you must receive in your spirit. And then you are strong. Hallelujah. How many of you believe this tonight? And so there are many of you that although you are born again, you will realize that Satan has gotten access to your life and access to your family. And tonight we are going to take authority all over all of those demonic manifestations. Are you listening to me? That everything that has delayed you by the power of the word of God, we will push you forward prophetically. Hallelujah. That you will be fortified with the word of God. That you will go and now be the miracle worker. You will release the miracle in your homes. Are you listening to me? That many of you tonight will encounter an anointing that will cause you to so prosper. And you will begin to make others prosper by reason of that anointing. That many of you will encounter an ability of the spirit. Discernment. You stand in your house and the Lord begins to show you things. This is what we want. And for all of you who came here with every kind of sickness, I want you to know that there is a devil behind it and that devil is going to leave you. Are you listening to me? Looked at the woman and said, Woman, thou art loose. From what? What did he see? He said, Thou art loose from thy infirmity. There is a wicked spirit called the spirit of infirmity. And the light and the power of God's word comes to bring you miracles. How many of you desire to walk in greater levels of his anointing? Because there will be an impartation in this place. In one minute, I'd like you to rise up on your feet and pray. Pray and say, Lord, give me a miracle. My heart is open. All of you who are sick, now is the time for faith to be released in your spirit. Within the next few minutes that we have, I'd like you to release your faith because the power of God is here. We hail you most high. Your hands, everybody. We hail you, Most High. We hail you, Lord. We hail you, Most High. We hail you, Lord. We hail you, Lord. I want to cast out devils and break men free from the oppression of Satan. The power of God is so strong in this place. And inside and outside. Ushers, please, I want you to help me. Hallelujah. As I begin to speak, the power of God will come. 
like a mighty rushing wind and it will blow ushers let me have those people in the name of jesus i command the power of satan broken over lives over families lift your hands everybody in the name of jesus every divination and stronghold of satan i break you free right now every manifestation of satan go 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 i release the power of god right now upon the congregation inside and outside I cast out devils in the name of Jesus. I see the power of God like a mighty rushing wind. Lift your hands, everybody. Hallelujah. Now, we're going to shout the name Jesus just once. My God, I see a sword rolling in the spirit. As we shout that name, the power of God will fall and set men free. All shall be ready. Are you ready? Lift your hands, everybody. I like you to shout, Jesus. Bring them out. Fire. 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 The fire of the spirit. That fire of body. That devil is a liar. Inside and outside, the fire of the spirit. Also, to make it, 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 make Go, 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 go. Wherefore God had so highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every other name, that at the mention of the name of Jesus. Bring this lady. That devil. You know my voice. Out of her right now. Come out of her. Come out of her. Come out of her. Please bring this lady. The power of God is still falling. Inside and outside. Satan. Leave this lady now. Come out of her. Come out of her now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Please bring this lady. You will not find a place even in her family. Therefore, Satan, go. Go. Come out of her right now in the name of Jesus. This is not all. Please lift your hands again. The Lord still tells me there's more. One more time. We are going to shout the name. That name that is above every other name. And as you shout, now I see angels. I see angels. Now I see angels. Come on, shout Jesus. 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 Shake 
Bring them out. I'm going to pray for you as I pray the fire of the Holy Spirit will set you free in the name of Jesus whose I am and who I serve every devil here right now go come out of them come out come out come out come out I set you free by the authority I break you free from covenants I break you free hallelujah please bring that lady No, you cannot stand the presence of God. Hallelujah. Hold on. Satan, your reign ends. Your reign ends. Leave I alone. Your reign ends. Leave I alone. Let her go. You are free. You are free. You are free. Hallelujah. Now look at me. The Lord is showing me the vision of someone in this place. I don't know why God is flowing like this, but please let's just follow him. Time is where we'll have to really hurry up. I'm seeing a substance on your hand whether it was given to you by your mother or someone in your family and you use it for protection who is that it was given to you please come out tonight God is setting men free please come out there is such a person in this place please make sure you are listening inside and outside who is that person please come out quickly except if it's one of these people lying down under the anointing there is such a person like that. Hallelujah. Please, as soon as you identify that person, let the person come out. Now, I want to minister healing. The healing power of God is here. I sense the healing power of God. Now, because of our time, we may not call out cases individually. Hallelujah. We'll just begin to release the life and the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Madam, I was, Jampa, this is the woman, right? Please come. What is the problem? Mike, please. Okay, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I've been having pains in my, my spinal cord. Um, not work well. You cannot work well. I can't bend down. I can't lift anything from the ground. What led to it? It was just pain that started on my Just pains? Yes. You believe God will set you free? Yes. 
That's why you came tonight. Yes. You have faith yes. that the Son of God yes. will set you free. Yes, yes He will. Amen. He will. Amen. What is this on your neck? Well, they gave me from Shika. They gave you from yes. Shika yes. to aid you. Yes. You believe God is going to set you free? Yes. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The spirit of infant. I bring life to your back right now. The power of God flows through your body in the name of the Lord Jesus. The power of God. New spine, new healing in the name of the Lord Jesus. Madam, the power of God is on As fast as you can run, come back, run, run, run.
blindness go in the name of Jesus deafness go as I begin to pray check yourself whatever is wrong with you there are some ladies with menstrual issues I command let your flow resume now in the name of Jesus my grain has just been healed please check yourself as soon as you are healed run out we don't have all the time my grain be healed now check yourself check yourself check yourself God is giving miracles peptic ulcer peptic ulcer right now I release the power of God I command healing for peptic ulcer receive it in the name of Jesus receive it in the name of Jesus check yourself go ahead and check yourself hallelujah now there is a lady with breathing problems you came here with breathing problems you can't breathe well who are you it's time for your miracle breathing problems I hope those outside are hearing can they hear breathing problems who is that breathing problem sometimes you have to cast for breath please quickly let's save time hallelujah now everyone who is in need of any kind of miracle any kind that you came here with there's no time to mention all of them you're going to shout i receive that's what the lord tells me three times the third time celebrate god and begin to do what you couldn't do if you find yourself healed i'd like you to come maybe we can take one or two testimonies are you ready to shout i receive it's an act of faith in the name of jesus go ahead and shout receive it receive it i release miracles i release miracles In the name of Jesus, just lay your hands on your chest. Lay your hands on your chest. I command that devil, breathe in and out. Breathe in as hard as you can. As hard you are healed right now. Breathe in. Breathe in as hard as you can. Hold on. Hold on. Now check yourself. What couldn't you do before? Okay. I find it very difficult to breathe. How about now? Breathe in and out. Any pain? Any issue? No. Are you serious? Yes, Breathe sir. in and out. Do what you couldn't do. Okay, let's try to jump small. Because when you jump, you any issue, yes, you are healed right now yes, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's someone I'm seeing one side of your ear. You feel like water. You don't hear very well with it. Who is the person? One side of your ear. Quickly run. Which of the ears? Which of the ears? Lay your hands on the one that is good. This is the one that is good. You don't hear well with this one. Okay. Thou devil of deafness. I hope you want somebody to hold this child. Will you please can ushers? That's why we need lady ushers. If you are here, you are not part of the ushering team. Sorry, boy, your mother will get back to you right now. In the name of Jesus, I command that devil of deafness. I command your ears be opened now. In the name of Jesus, now cover this. Holy Spirit, 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 Perfection, the air has opened. 
she couldn't hear with this ear stand up madam which ear couldn't you hear with this are you one. hearing right now very well. close it are you hearing tell us your testimony very well sir okay close your ear before i couldn't hear with this ear go ahead talk I let her talk i cannot hear with this ear Okay. When there's any phone call, I will have to put it on a uh, loud voice before I will answer the call because of the pains of this, this, this side. Sometimes the right eye of my right side will be bringing out bringing water. water. Yes, I see it. The but now that devil that has but gone. But now I'm free. I don't hear any pain. In I think we should dance a little. Are you ready? Just, just transpose and let's... Miracles are still happening. Worship, help me. I don't have an idea. Just celebrate miracles. Rekia, 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 that's the name that I hear, Rekia, please come quickly, Rekia. The Lord says I should prophesy a restoration for Rekia, that's what the Lord says I should tell you. This is a scripture the Lord gives me. He said, For many are the afflictions of the righteous. He said, But the Lord delivered him from them all. <laughs> Hallelujah. And Jankfa is going to pray for you. I feel led that he should just pray and lay his hands and prophesy, call forth. The thing about the prophetic, it, it creates to call forth a restoration. Hallelujah. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we demand the restoration Come for on, our this hour. Release your hands. In the name of Jesus, we declare that the years that the enemy has stolen from you is restored now. In the name of Jesus, we uproot the planting of the enemy out of your stomach. Out of your stomach. Out of your stomach. Out of your stomach. In the name of Jesus. Even to your marriage, the Lord brings a restoration. The Lord wipes your tears in the name of Jesus. Go forth. God said he's healing you right now. He's healing you right now. He's healing you of high blood pressure. He's taking that growth out of your stomach in the name of Jesus. You are delivered this hour in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. You are here. You cannot turn your hand completely like this. It's been a pain for a long time and you prayed you came to this meeting and you said god you must visit me you are a woman i'm seeing you tie something on your head you tie something on your head who is that come please run which of the hands this hand what happened to it i don't know satan i command your power broken over this hand i release the anointing of the spirit what you feel is the fire of the holy ghost going around your hand let her be free right now right now right now it's the power of god the anointing of the spirit going through you you are free 
Madam, look at me. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I am free. I am free. Now wind your hand as wide as you can. Go ahead. Don't think about it. Go ahead. Total freedom. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Could you do this before? No. The Lord heals you right now. Yes. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. For no man can enter a man's house and spoil the goods except he first binds the strong man. That's why I said, for if it is true that Satan is the only resistance, then nothing stops your healing. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? Oh dear, we're out of time. Guys, there's really no room for the ministers to come in. But I'd like us to pray. Hallelujah. We really, really are out of time. This is past nine. This meeting tonight is supposed to change you. It's supposed to bring something out of your life. Are you listening to me? So what we're going to do right now, because we don't have time, is... Um, the ministers in the few minutes that we have they'll just move through the crowd so that the people they would have brought on they can just minister to them while i just minister to everyone in mass is that correct is that okay so we'll be doing that right now please ministers just go as the lord directs you just walk through the crowd and minister to the people please so that we can save time hallelujah now all of you listen to me let's do it really really fast hallelujah now i want to release Did you bring prayer requests? No. You did? Okay, well, we only do it as the spirit leads. Okay, but quickly, quickly. Ushers, at the same time, we are doing all of this at the same time. You are submitting your prayer request if you don't have any, write one quickly and concentrate while the ministers, please, walk through the crowd by the spirit and just minister. We have to do this real fast. We took our time to teach the word. You have four ladies in your family. No one is married. Is part of your request. Run out here quickly. Four ladies. No one is married. Four ladies. Inside and outside. Please make sure you are listening. Four ladies. No one is married. And even you right now, you are not married. You have been praying for it. Run out. You came here for God to give you a miracle. You believe that? You believe God gives you a miracle? I want you to know that God will terminate everything that looks like delay. Any other person, please come quickly. Hallelujah. The Lord himself. Do you understand? There is the fragrance of the spirit of God that comes upon you. The Bible says, Isaac speaking said, The smell of my son is like the field that the Lord has blessed. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray for you right now. I'd like you to believe by the faith of the son of God. That God himself is going to terminate. You will be very surprised. It will look like magic. It's the power of God. Are you listening to me? If you go to a native doctor in... Where, did they, where are the people in Zaria? Where did they reside? In Zaria City. And ask him, let me tell you, he will do some incantations for you and you will find out that you are married. But God himself is mightier than any man. Are you listening to me? Thank you, Father. Lift up your hands, all of you in front. Lord, I command that manifestation of Satan over your family to be gone. I see a lot of oppression in your family. Come, please. I need a lady. I need a lady. Any come, come to the front, please. Just lay your hands on her stomach. That's what I need. Just lift your hands. You just lift your hands. In the name of Jesus, be free from that wickedness in your family. Be free now by the power of the Holy Spirit. I set you free. Help me. In the name of Jesus Christ, be free now by the power of the Holy Spirit be free for your family right now we command supernatural marriages by the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus supernatural marriages by the power of the Holy Spirit supernatural marriages for everyone in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ hallelujah hallelujah please write it quickly because we want to do an impartation now and there's still an announcement. Please don't be quick to go. There is a very important announcement we must communicate. Hallelujah. Write your prayer request. Quickly want to do an impartation so that you don't fall on someone writing this. 
I don't know how hungry you are for more of the anointing of the Spirit. Are you listening to me? I don't know how hungry you are. The ministers are ministering to pastors. Are, the ministers are ministering to people. There's no time. Oh, okay. You receive it too. Oh, you received the anointing and you were touching her to do it for her. Okay, go ahead. Pray for her. In the name of Jesus, we declare the power of the Holy Spirit through you to her. In the name of Jesus, healing and perfection. And may that anointing not leave you. From today, look at me. I'm prophesying to you. Any lady you lay hands on, you will release supernatural marriages and restoration. If you believe that, lift your hands. Because you have stood in the ushering department, I command that this dimension of impartation comes upon your life. You will see it happen and you will be surprised. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Worshippers, are we ready to pray? Worshippers, I think you should receive something to hold your hands together. Hallelujah. Worship team, let's start with you an anointing and an impartation upon you. Hallelujah. For greater grace, for greater dimension. Hallelujah. I'm just going to walk. There is an angel I see standing close to me that brings the anointing of the Holy Spirit for you people. Hallelujah. I'm just going to walk and stretch my hands and I see the power of God. I see Steve Strings. The Lord tells me you are stepping into a strange order. A strange order. Hallelujah. Worship people, are you ready? Please just lift your hands as I move in the name of Jesus. Let that anointing flow to you. Let it flow to you. Let it flow to you. Every one of you. Let it flow to you, Steve. Let it flow to you. Mike, let it flow. Sheyi, Tosin, go ahead. Yinka, everyone. I release it. Receive it now. Now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Receive it now. An impartation. You begin to sing like angels by the power of the Holy Spirit. There is an activation upon you. In the name of Jesus, we release this anointing upon the koinonia worship team. You begin to function in an order of power. Your worship begins to take the house to a new level of grace, a new level of power. Every worshiper in the crowd, this anointing touches you right now. Everyone, please leave, put your hands down if you are not singing. Every worshiper, now I release that anointing. If you are a worshiper here, lift your hands. Let that anointing flow. Right now to every worshiper, I command new songs. Come out of your spirit, man. Come out of your spirit, man. New songs. Retaka bandia. Agrite kebosoto. Bande kapariaka. Rekete seke. Repanda zata. Ekarieka tabasa. Mapareka bosupaya. Everyone in the ministry of worship, I stir it up. This fire, this anointing. Parike te gotopatai. Receive it, receive it, receive it like a mighty rushing wind inside and outside. Parekete bokoto pakasa, ranta baka pariakatai. A new order of worshippers, a new order of spiritual people. Pataka pateke patuzapaya. Outside, I see the anointing of God flowing on some of you outside. Outside. Through the window, I stretch my hands. Let the anointing hit every worshiper. Now, 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 now. Let new songs arise. Let new songs. A new pattern of worship will be introduced to the body of Christ. A new pattern heavenly songs for the instrumentalists you will no longer pray instruments you will be worshippers upon the mistral go ahead Steve and play just the just the guitar go ahead and flow I will reveal my dark saints upon the harp mass impartations lift your hands i'm going to release the fire of god an apostolic fire a prophetic fire a healing anointing get ready lift up your hands now receive it receive it take it in the name of jesus right now right now right now in the name of jesus take it 
Take it. Lift your hands. Everyone. Take it. Fire upon your spirit. The spirit of prophecy. Receive it. Receive it. The prophetic spirit. The prophetic anointing. Receive it. The prophetic anointing. After the count of three, the spirit of prayer and supplication will fall upon the house. Prayer lives will be activated right now. At the count of three, one, two, Intercessors, arise! 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 Receive the quickening of the Spirit. Receive quickening upon your spirit, man. Great intercessors, men of prayer, women of prayer, men of prayer, women of prayer, men of prayer, women of prayer, men of prayer, women of prayer. Let the fountains be broken from your spirit. Let the fountains be broken hallelujah sorry we are taking time we'll soon be out of here I want to release the healing anointing many of you will step into a strange order of healing that will make you afraid if God be God tonight then it comes upon you. Lift your hands as high as it can get. For it will come upon many. Including your little children I see. Let the healing anointing flow. 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 Let no one be left. Let the healing power Reketetete Bokoya Reparikete Repandeko Doso Rapariaka Reketo Soso Reparia Apataka Tosekes Barikete Rondoso Super Riketi Arata Bariakatan Entro Doso Koto Let it flow outside i stretch my hands to you receive it outside receive it the healing anointing outside take it take it take it take it I want to pray over your finances make sure you stand in for your loved ones enough of struggling is not by power Isaiah 45 verse 3 and I will give you the treasures of darkness and the hidden riches of secret places Deuteronomy 8 18 but thou shalt remember the Lord thy God for it is he that giveth thee the power the anointing there is the ability there is an anointing to prosper lift your hands everybody please receive it please please we need it i always do this we need a prosperous generation standing for your loved ones with this anointing let every debt i don't care how much for you and your family 
let every debt be cancelled receive it strong I pray for you receive it strong for the Lord gave it to me the Lord gave it to me and tonight for the love I have for you I declare receive it take it take it take it take it receive it let it flow prosperity in your business favor the Esther anointing the Esther anointing I, re I release it with all my heart I release it I release it strange order of wealth of favor of prosperity receive it receive it those of you standing in for your loved ones those of you standing in for your loved ones families if your family has suffered financially and you think enough is enough lift your hands lift your hands if you think your family has struggled hear me i don't care what your father is doing or what your mother is doing for it is the lord that can empower a man and tonight if i be a servant of god if i be sent by the anointing of the spirit out of the virtue that he has put i invoke it from the heavens receive it now receive it now receive it now receive it receive it receive it receive it your families will enter a strange order of favor a strange order of prosperity Even if you are the only one sponsoring yourself from today stop struggling move forward i give you a prophetic push into the next level of kingdom wealth and prosperity hallelujah everything that represents a delay in your life whether marriage whether relationship whether job you are on a contract they are supposed to sign it they have not signed it right now under this anointing i command every closed door be open in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. From tonight, I declare that you will step into a level of favor. The Bible says, and Jesus grew in wisdom, in stature, and in favor with God and with men. A strange order of favor where strangers including your enemies will work to bless you receive it receive it receive it receive it receive it all of you who are workers here you have a job all of you who are workers it's time for the people around you to know that the Lord has honored you. Listen, we'll start with those who are lecturers. If you're a student here and your father is a lecturer or your mother, you can stand in for them. We want, I don't care what the system is from the Senate. We want to legislate certain things here by the prophetic order of God's Spirit. Lift your hands. You're a lecturer or you're standing in for a lecturer. Enough is enough that anyone that has been due for promotion and has been delayed by the wickedness of men the bible says in job 5 he will deliver you from the scourging tongues of men 
For there is a, a God that can set a man down and lift another man up right now. Under this anointing of the Spirit. Promotion comes neither from the east, nor the south, nor the west. I command my father and my king. Supernatural promotion upon every lecturer. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. That day, that day that conspire against you, hear me, that day that conspire against you will find themselves working for your good. I command it in the name of Jesus. I command it in the name of Jesus. Please, where is Stanley, Bishop? The Lord brings a new degree of honor for you. No, I want to pray for you first. The Lord brings for you a new degree and a new order of honor. The Lord says, I should tell you, for the times of faithfulness have been measured, and your faithfulness is speaking. A strange order of honor is what the Lord brings. And I pray in the name of Jesus, let this strange anointing come upon you and mantle you to bring you honor beyond your imagination in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We have to round up quickly. Please, there is an important announcement we are going to communicate right now. Hallelujah. You are here, you are not born again. You have not given your heart to the Lord. Hallelujah. You have not given your heart to the Lord in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. I pray right now, listen to me, inside and outside, you are here and you are not born again. We love you. The Lord does not condemn you. It's time for you to come home and start a new life with the Lord. Inside and outside, or you have given your heart to the Lord, but you have found yourself derailing from the path of the Spirit. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I encourage you. Please, let's all rise before we sit down. Let's all rise. Everyone, come out quickly and stand. Everyone who belongs in that category, you want to give your heart to the Lord, or you are making a commitment, please appreciate them as they come. Appreciate them. Leave your seat inside and outside. This is the greatest miracle. Appreciate them. The Lord is talking to you. You are welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. Welcome them. We welcome you home. You're welcome home. You're welcome home. No man condemns you. God is still speaking to some other people. You are welcome. We will wait for you. You are welcome. You are welcome. You are welcome. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am so delighted in my heart for all of you who have come out to indicate an interest to love God and to walk in his ways. The Bible says all who draw nigh to him he will in no wise cast away. And I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit that the Lord himself will bring you into a new experience. This is the greatest testimony you will ever have in your life. That you made a decision for Jesus Christ is the pivot on which everything in your Christian life and experience will revolve around. So lift your hands after me as we pray this prayer. Say after me in the name of Jesus. I declare that I'm born again. I denounce sin and Satan. I declare that eternal life comes into my spirit. In the name of Jesus, I am one with Christ. I partake of the blessings of redemption. There's power to be called a child of God. The hand of God is upon me. Holy Spirit, come and find abode in me. Make a vessel and a treasure out of me. I declare that I'm born again in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, preserve these ones. You have brought them by your spirit. Preserve them. Holy Spirit, I pray that you teach them the principles of the kingdom and make generals out of them. In the name of the Lord Jesus, thank you, Heavenly Father. 
In Jesus' name I pray. Appreciate them. This is the greatest decision you have ever made. Hold on, hold on. Please, I'd like you to just follow the ushers one moment. They'll just have your names and your contact details and we'll reach you. You'll do that very quickly. Hallelujah. Now, Stanley, please, there is a project that we are going to begin. Please, everybody listen. This is very important. Just a few minutes. I know we've taken our time. I'm really sorry. But how many of you think it's worth it? Hallelujah. Okay, so just listen to Stanley. He's going to be passing a very important announcement. Please sit down inside and outside. We'll soon be out. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And then if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.